All right, we are live. Supposedly, according to Google and YouTube, we're live. So this is a live question and answer session. It's Wednesday evening, March 7th, 2018. And my goal is to get through as many marketing and entrepreneurship questions as possible from you live here on the YouTube live stream. Uh, real quick, I wanna just take a quick moment to jump in and make sure that the stream's coming through. You can hear me clearly, the audio sounds good, and you can see me as well. So I'm gonna jump over to chat and see if you guys can hear me indeed, and we'll get started in just one moment. Stream's coming through, you can hear me clearly, right. the audio sounds good. Sounds good to me on that one right there. So we have a fair number of questions. Sounds good. All right, everybody, what's up, everyone? I'm stoked you guys are here, uh, trying to mix up the times on when I do these lives so I can uh, you know, spread the love around the globe. And um, I know it's nighttime in Europe, but I'm hoping that uh, Australia, New Zealand, Asia, the Hawaiian islands, and uh, obviously North Americans uh, getting off of work who are gonna go home and grind and hustle on a Wednesday night can, can get this. And um, I've got a fair number, so I'm just, I'm literally gonna jump right in on the questions. If you have questions, you can enter them in the chat. I'm going to be going through the chat and uh, literally going to kind of rapid fire these, answer them as quick as I can so I can get through as many as possible. Um, greetings, salutations. I'm, I'm stoked to be here with you, but uh, just for the sake of, you know, we got a limited amount of time, so let's jump in on the questions. So thanks for being here with me on this. The first question I got is, how do you, con how do you track your conversions through the different steps of your funnel? Um, do you use Google analytic goals, tag manager? How would you recommend someone does that on a small budget? So for me specifically, um, I think that running analytics and getting comfortable with analytics goals is probably the best approach. If you set up one funnel, and it, it, it depends on how many different traffic sources you have and how granular you want your data. If you set up a very specific goal, I have a landing page and then I have the thank you page that they get to once they check out. And if you track that goal in Google Analytics, you can use what's called UTM codes appended to the different URLs. So your Facebook, could have a UTM code that says Facebook, your Pinterest could have a UTM code that says Pinterest. And then when you go look at your goals, you could break down that goal by the UTM code. That's probably the easiest way to set it up. It's really actually quite simple to set up inside of Google. Um, and it is using the goals and then you use the UTM um, kind of anchor on the links when you put your links out. Now for me, Personally, on my Facebook ads, there's one additional thing that I do to measure my goals, which is I run everything through my own affiliate program. So my shopping cart has an affiliate module. I've set myself up as an affiliate. And so all my links from my Facebook ads are affiliate links. So I can track Facebook through this one unique affiliate. So I log into my shopping cart and I look and I see how many sales that affiliates made. I see how much revenue that affiliates brought in. And I compare that with Facebook's numbers and they are never the same. Facebook likes to claim more sales than it gives me on a very regular basis. Um, but sometimes I actually get more sales than they claim too. So it's just a way for me to measure that. And the reason I do that separately is because of how um, I'm putting money in it. So I'm a little more on top of it. I didn't use the Google analytics goals and UTMs, what I would do is once a month, I would literally total up how many people reached my landing page, how many people reached my checkout page, or how many people reached my landing page last week, how many people subscribed to my list last week, and I would just run the numbers separately. Um, I wouldn't do it weekly, it was totally haphazard um, because success is messy. Progress is actually quite messy. Um, I did not spend time to set up all the right systems getting going. So do whatever you can, definitely set up a goal in analytics, definitely have analytics goals all over your site to track, or just the analytics code to track everything. And that's the best starting point because once it's there, you're able to like slice and dice the, the analytics data from there. Um, Cool, so I'm just now, that one came from outside. That was somebody, she's in finals right now. So she was like, dude, I've got a final at that time. And I was like, I got you fam, I got you covered. So there it is. And next one, um, Marcos is signing off from Germany. It's it's midnight, there it is. So Wadud Husani, um, please explain how to do SEO for a business in one city that operates in surrounding cities. I mean, it's the same game, right? So like if you, you would just include the different cities and the different areas in the content. So if it's like, plumber comma New York, and that's where they operate out of, then you talk about plumber in New York, but if they off 
also want to be focused for plumber in Brooklyn, plumber, plumber in the Bronx, right? And the plumber in Manhattan, then you would create specific content for each of those items that's 100% unique that also has the keyword phrases of the locations. If you have different uh, physical addresses, you could have a contact page, you could get them each on the map, and then managing your Google My Business, you're able to kind of configure your My Business for your main city. But if you have one location that's of service to many areas, just make sure you're getting those area locations into the content um, naturally through the different pieces of blog posts, the, the different kind of content that you put out. It's, it's really quite simple. Um, don't overthink things. A lot of people overthink stuff in SEO and, and a lot of it is just, just go forward, get one post up, do the best you can, do it again and again. At some point you'll loop back and kind of make them all better. But um, that's that's my big take on that. So Marcos, you got one question. Um, it's kind of loaded about Yoast and rich snippets. Okay, you're currently on shared hosting. Got it with A2, perfect. Uh, great choice, glad you like A2. They've been really good for me. Um, how do I work rich snippets in your content? I don't. Um, I hate bloated plugins. I do too. So hard code it and I don't do rich snippets at all. Like period. It's one of those things that I am totally ignoring because I don't know. I don't see it returning enough value for the time and energy required to go down that rabbit hole for me to learn and master that. So it's something I'm totally ignoring. So I'm not actually able to, to help you with that, but um, maybe, well, I'm not able to help you beyond saying it might be worth ignoring it for a while and just running forward with your content strategy at some point, maybe hiring somebody to come back in and do your rich snippets for you, uh, somebody from Upwork or just ignore it because that's what I'm doing. I ignore a lot of things that a lot of marketers say, you must do this. Oh, you have to do that. And I've, I've been ignoring most of those things for a very long time. Um, I found just a core of what works and we just do that over and over and over. Content, email list, uh, give value, make offers. Like literally that is my business model. Um, Cindy Goldrich, you're new here. Welcome to the party, Cindy. Um, you're getting ready to launch your ADHD parenting e-course. That's awesome. How to plan a Facebook or Pinterest budget or marketing plan, finding and vending people to do that stuff so you can support the parents. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, the e-myth, right? Like it, you want to help parents with the ADD, ADHD, you want to kind of be of service there, but all of a sudden you got to learn all this marketing stuff. Um, how to vet someone. In the Facebook ad space, I've never hired someone to do ads. I've looked into it. I've just never felt comfortable with that. Um, it is something that I'm, I, I maintain hands-on, so I'm not great in that situation. I would definitely check references. I would want actual data from their client accounts, and I would want to speak with those clients. I would literally, like, you need to give me your client list, uh, telephone number, so I can reach out to them and talk to them and ask them about the process specifically. Um, generally speaking, you need to make sure you have an offer that converts first, right? Like, Facebook traffic is like fuel. And if you don't have a fire going, fuel's not going to do anything. You pour fuel on a pile of sticks and it's just going to be a smelly pile of sticks. So you have to get the fire going and the fire is the conversion. So you need to prove and make sure that your opt-in and your sales letter convert before a Facebook ads person is actually going to be able to deliver any value. And most Facebook people aren't conversion experts. Like it's two very different skill sets. So the odds of someone who can help you run the Facebook ads effectively, being able to help you with the conversion optimization in your funnel is actually really quite low. So focus on conversions first and maybe learn enough about Facebook ads to run um, enough ads to test your stuff. But at first, your goal is to test your funnel to see what your baseline numbers are, right? What your opt-in rate is and what your conversion purchase rate is. And then a lot of email marketing on the back end, you can just keep emailing people and, and build that trust and, and eventually, because uh, most people won't buy your one-time offer and what you offer from Facebook. So following up and building a relationship is the key to that there. Um, for budget, that's that's totally up to you. We started 100% with content marketing. We did zero paid traffic for the first four plus years of our business because I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on something that was totally untested. And honestly, I just didn't have any money. We were absolutely flat broke, um, literally like $50,000 in debt and had no money to my name. Uh, it was a struggle to, to get the $100 for the hosting. So what we did, we did content marketing because that's in, in our control and it allowed us to every blog post we put out, every video we put out, was giving value to that audience. So when you're saying that you you want to be you want to support the parents, well, maybe if you do a content marketing strategy instead of a paid marketing strategy, every piece of content you put out supports the parents. They get on your email list to get a little bit more, and that might 
might be a totally different approach that could work for you. That's how we approached it. The only time I got into Facebook advertising is when we were making, I mean, I paid off all 50 grand in my student loan debt. Um, we were making very, very good money and I began to reinvest the profits. Um, and I did so negatively uh, for months and months and months and months. I probably put five, 10 grand down the drain and went through two, three thousand dollars worth of um, not down the drain. That's a terrible expression. Um, I, it just it, it's the learning curve, right? It just took me that long to get to where I got a, a campaign and a, a funnel that, that worked together. But ever since then, I've been able to ride that wave very successfully for years since. Um, so it, it is it's not a, a cheap option. And I preferred to go about it from uh, reinvesting my profits. I hope that's helpful. Um, Joseph, so what hardware and software should you use to live stream on YouTube? Great question. So I bought a Logitech webcam to get off of my little laptop webcam. My older ones, it was kind of grainy. This is an HD. I think it's like the 9020 or the 9210 or it's the Amazon. It wasn't the most expensive one. It was one step down. I think it was a $40 um, uh, webcam and that's it. And I use, I when you go in through the Google excuse me, YouTube live events, uh, set up a new event and you can broadcast live immediately. I'm just using their Hangouts. So I've got the little Google Hangouts window right here and that's it. So no fancy software at all. Just, I bought a, a Logitech webcam and you can learn about my studio. I've got my three studio lights on and I've got my studio mic right here. Um, and I did that in a video, I think last week, um, the, the podcast studio video and then the lighting studio video. Um, those two videos will show you everything that's on here. Jordan Bench, what's up, man? And again, welcome. I'm, I'm so grateful you're here. We're not doing all the, the highs and high fives. I'm, I just got a lot of questions. So I'm just going to kind of rapid fire on these. Um, Jordan Bench, I'm stoked that you've watched a lot of the, the videos. You're going to start your 90 day challenge tonight. I'm excited to hear that. Um, do I have advice on how to start off your YouTube channel? Origin stories, why you're doing this, man. Like I don't, very few people are going to see your first video. Um, mine's only getting views because I tell people like, go look how awkward I was in video number one. The biggest thing I can tell you is to actually do it to actually get that video out. Like you have to get number one before you can get to number two and number two will be a little bit better than number one. It really doesn't matter. Pick a keyword and go. And the one tip I can give you is pick a keyword every day, right? Like you can come up with the ideas you want from anywhere, but when you have your idea and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do a video on this, just do a little bit of keyword research. I don't care if you use the Google trends tool, if you just search it on Google to see what the auto populate is or whether you get the actual keyword tool that I use, it's like 25 or 30 bucks a month. Um, if you do keyword research and you add keywords to the title and the description and the tags on every video you do for a 90 day challenge, you'll have a lot more of an audience than if you don't do keyword research and you're haphazard about that process. Um, beyond that, get momentum on your side. And once you feel like you're in your groove, work on starting to build the list, squeeze page, free offer, email list growth. That's the next key thing. I didn't get that going early enough. I don't, my list is still under 4,000 subscribers and I've been doing videos for 18 months, right? So like perspective there for you. And when you get a list of 20 people, celebrate every one of those and start doing the, the more emails. I hope you're on my email list. You see how frequently I'm emailing. Um, to me, that's, that's, that's my business, right? That is the biz, the Miles Beckler business is that email list. So it's audience growth, YouTube and blogging, right? And all those other things. And then the email list, that's actually the business machine. So, so get to that email as quick as you can, but you, you got to get that groove. You got to get going and just, just start, right? Like there's no right way to start. There's no, like, I'm going to do them in order. There is no order. Just totally haphazard and um, good on you, man. Like throw your hat over the fence and, and get her done. You can do it. You'll be amazed at what comes of it, man. Cause it's a, uh, it's a, it's like a personal development process uh, and a marketing game. Um, so you've watched all the SEO videos, follow up question. You don't have a grasp on SEO. <clears throat> Does it matter what keywords you try to rank for first? No, it really doesn't like low hanging fruit and then work to the harder ones. You're totally correct. Um, I think that just make sure they show up and ignore whether it's super difficult or super easy because your channel has zero authority from day one. So at day 90, you might have really good channel authority, but right now getting started, you're going to have very low channel authority, but that's okay. Um, you'll hit their algorithm anyways. They index you every time you put one up. So just, just make sure it's focused on a keyword phrase that actually gets search volume versus a keyword phrase that doesn't get search volume. That really is the first step. And once you start to get momentum on your side and you're you're, you're getting closer through that that 90 day challenge. Um, you'll you'll probably notice that your your traffic will continue up. But like it, it's there's so much about 
the process and about building that channel authority over the 90 days, that that's the actual goal. And just being focused on, on little keywords, you'll get showed up, you'll show up in, in the, um, the similar videos or the videos that, that are around videos more if you use the right keywords. Um, so that's it. Um, can I do more SEO videos? For sure. And I've got a guy, um, so I, I bought a, I paid a, a high end SEO guy to do an audit for my site um, for a few thousand bucks. He's really smart. And we're both speaking in the event here pretty soon. And we're, when we get back, we're going to do an interview together. Um, so I'm, I'm not only going to do more SEO, but I'm going to bring on some really smart people to help um, further that because th it is kind of a game, but I have a playlist go through my SEO playlist. There's the, the live video we did on the whiteboard. Um, it was a one hour live. And then I've got like one or two other videos, but really just keyword research and then get your main keyword in the title, the description a few times, write out a good long description in YouTube and then get it in the tags. And that's, that's enough from there. It's just flex the muscle over and over. Um, monkey Yina. Um, can I explain the DIY style? Can I explain the DIY sales funnel is one of the upsell private Facebook links set? Whoa, what? Hold on. Can you explain in the DIY sales funnel is the one click upsell private Facebook link sent in a separate email from the membership welcome email? So if you're talking about purchasing the one click upsell, that happens from within the shopping cart. That, that offer is displayed within the shopping cart and that all happens inside of the funnel. If you're talking about delivery, how to add someone to a private Facebook group, you need to do that manually. And what we do is we actually send them instructions. Usually they're buying more than that product from us. So we embed the instructions inside of the page that they get access to when they purchase and or we follow up with email and you just give them instructions add me as a friend let me know that you purchased and i'll add you to the, the closed facebook group and then you got to do it manually uh, we have our virtual assistant do everything um, so she does that all for us but yeah all of our access to our private membership our private facebook groups is done is done manually and we just you just got to lay out the instructions whatever fits in with your business model um are there two emails if they choose to purchase the private facebook membership yeah exactly um Right, right, right. So, so the upsell would be a bundle and the second product in that bundle would be access to the membership and it could be a multi, it could be a recurring charge, but the access, the actual product delivery would just be an email for them or access to a specific page. Um, that's, that's actually how you physically set it up. So yeah, like again, you're not sending them a link because it's, it's a closed private thing, right? You want it to be a secret group generally. So you're just giving them instructions, add me as a friend, do this, do that. And then you just cross reference their email to make sure they did purchase and then you can get it over there. So, um, really like, don't try to automate it. Just let it be really simple. Bundle it in as a separate product. It should trigger off a separate email and then just tell them what to do in the email from there. And if you want quality assurance, just double check every person. When you see one of those sales comes in through your system, just go make sure they get through and feel free to follow up with them. If they don't add them on Facebook yourself, you can, you can speed up the process. You don't have to be, um, reactive. You can be proactive as well, but, but just kind of lay it out so they can find it. Um, cool. So, um, let me see here. Dude hack. All right. Dude hack show. Sorry. They, you got caught in the spam filter. Um, where did that go? All right, we got all kinds of people on here. What's up, y'all? This is exciting. So Dude Hack is asking if we can do a quick review of his site. Um, Dude-hack.com. All right, let me flip it over to screen share. Chat, screen share. We're going to do a little bit here. Share. All right, you should be seeing my screen. And now let's go to here. One moment. Dudehack.com, I think is it, right? Dude-hack.com. All right, welcome to UK. Nice, man. I'm noticing the layout. I like it here. So free tender tips. All right, cool. So free tender, like you're you're losing you're first of all, you're wasting a lot of space up here, right? I the human eye is is attracted to white space. So you've got a lot of negative white space up here. Um, this isn't technically a landing page, but you're getting close, right? Like I see what you're working on here, get instant access. So yeah, like you're you're making process, you're making progress, which is good. You obviously have your niche dialed in. This is kind of a long, long page here, but you don't necessarily have a funnel yet, I would say. Um, and I would make sure that um, you're really focusing on sending people to a one, see some billing details, like, right, I'm going to a product here when I'm like, I'm getting instant access. 
I don't get that this is an offer, right? I don't see that this is an actual paid offer yet. I can't tell. So it looks like this is a sales page, but it doesn't say that like you're about to pay me money here. So that's very confusing and that's going to get a very negative reaction. So this is your sales page and it looks like this is the free tips. Um, so you need a more compelling free offer, right? Like you're going straight for the sale and you got to learn more there. Um, but you need a free offer. So you got your blog posts there. So what is the free thing, right? Like tips delivered to my email, that's not enough, right? You need to give me a result, not tips to my inbox. You need to actually give me a result and then make that result the thing that I'm going after. But it looks like you've got good content marketing going and um, yeah, keep with it. But, but really like, I think you need to focus on A, building the list with a very clear offer that's gonna give me value. And then B, make sure that sales page when they go there is A, after you, um, make sure when they go to that sales page, that's after they know, like, and trust you, meaning you followed up with email with them. And then also you want to really make sure that it's very clear. Here's the free thing you're going to get, deliver a result, help them get a result before you try to sell them something. And when you do sell them something, make sure it's really clear. You're going to pay me this many dollars for this thing. That's going to help you accomplish this goal. I don't feel like it was super clear, but you're on the path, right? This is how it starts. So keep taking action, um, create an actual dedicated squeeze page for your free thing. Work on no navigation, nothing on top, nothing on bottom. Like literally look at my milesbecker.com forward slash millions page, like something that simple. You really need to focus on building the list, building the list, building the list, because that is ultimately the machine of your business, as we mentioned earlier. Um, Tocar piano de oído. What's up, man? So you made $520 selling your products. That's awesome. Um, now you're getting charged more than what your product costs per sale. What can you do? So what people do when their price per sale goes up above what they're earning from Facebook pay-per-click is they really focus on adding a one-click upsell to the end. So you're selling something right here on Facebook. When they purchase that, what's the upgrade? What's the, you know, at McDonald's for a while they were, do you want to supersize that? Or you order a hamburger and they say, would you like fries and a Coke with that? Right? So you buy a hamburger for two bucks and they're like, do you want fries and a Coke? And all of a sudden it's a $5 order because of that upsell. The fries and the Coke complement. So there's a complimentary upsell and the supersize me is more of the same thing, more of what I already want. So there's the, the kind of upgrade by more and then there's the complement style upsell. So figure out a one click upsell that you can add on. That's the quickest way to get more money in your funnel. Um, make sure you're following up with the people who don't purchase. Build a list, grow the relationship with the list, email lots of value, give lots of value, demonstrate that you can help them. And what you'll end up seeing is that of the people who didn't purchase, if they're on your list and you build a relationship effectively, more of them will start to purchase and that will increase the amount, the average order value or the average lifetime customer value um, or your value per subscriber, depends on which metric you're following on that. Um, but those are the two options. Number one, email more, build more relationships and then make more offers via email. Option number two is add a one-click upsell that enhances the purchase that they just purchased. Um, those are the two, two easy ways. Um, Joe Freeman, do I have a video on how to identify your niche hashtags and make a social media list for those hashtags? Um, so in my Instagram training, we talked about it. There's a tool. If you're on iPhone, I believe it's called the Command app, and the Command app will do almost all of that niche hashtag research for you. But like, grab your phone, just start following hashtags, start following the influencers who have your audience's attention. Look at what they, look what hashtags they use. Like literally, like put in the work. I don't normally automate a lot of those things um, unless it's a very low priority on my marketing list. So for me, like Instagram for the Miles Beckler brand is really low on my priority list. So I did kind of automate it. But if that was the number one focus, if, if I was going to become an Instagram marketer and I was going to build my audience mainly through Instagram as I'm doing here on YouTube instead, I would spend even more time on the platform digging even deeper. But since I'm YouTube focused, that's where my energy goes. That's why I'm, that, I'm just applying my SEO skills because that works here and I have those. I brought those to the table. So the command app, if you're on iPhone, could help you with that. There's definitely some web-based tools that can find the hashtags. But like you got to think, everyone in your niche is using those tools. So if you want to out strategize them, you got to do that extra work. And it generally comes down from like, like, you know, hand to hand combat, as Gary V says, uh, defeating divorce. You've got an idea of finding and paying an expert in a particular niche and using their expertise to develop high quality content at a faster pace. Sounds smart. 
Uh, have I, so I've tried that. Um, my wife and my niche are very, they're personal brands, right? So it's, it's actually really difficult for me to get someone to write as Miles Beckler. I've hired writers before and the voice, it just didn't work. So what I do is I start with these videos. I have them transcribed and copy edited. And what I get from that process is much more authentic. And I think that's really important. Uh, my wife's the same way, right? It's her, it's my wife, Melanie, like it's her thing, it's her brand. So, so she's, we've hired several writers to try to help, um, expand our content marketing and it, it doesn't work, but like, you know, if you're a lawyer potentially, or right, if you're in a legal niche, like, like there, there are ways that work. So a, a good example of how it works, um, travel fashion girl is a friend of mine. Um, Alex is, she's a gangster, right? She's really, really good at what she does. Travel fashion girl.com. I believe she has a team of 17 writers. Um, Biddy Taro, Bridget, she's a good friend as well. Both of these two individuals were um, abundant circle attendees. Uh, Bridget is crushing it in the how to read tarot card space. And I believe she has like seven or eight writers on her team. So it, it totally works. Um, it's just not something I've mastered and it's it's usually because i i don't know i just don't i haven't mastered it so yes i think it could work yes i think hiring somebody who's an expert pay it's going to cost a lot to hire this level of an expert but the content you'll get will actually be world class so if you're going to do it go for the world class content and give it give it your all um, i think that is the approach that has the highest chance to work the obvious pro is you get more reach and you get to stay focused on higher value tasks, right? If you're, if you're a lawyer and you're making $350 an hour, $50 an hour to write amazing blog content, there's a good arbitrage in there. Just do your lawyer thing, pay the 50 bucks an hour, and you'll get more people coming in through your funnel through the content marketing. If you don't have that $350 an hour thing and 50 bucks an hour is worth it for you, do the work yourself is, is that's kind of my basic approach. Um, cool. I got all of the hellos and the highs and the Cool, we got New Zealand in the house. That's awesome. Hashtag badass. Cool, Australia. Sweet. I got Oceana. I don't know. Is that is that an approved terminology for the New Zealand for the Kiwis and the Aussies? Um, Spain in the house. I'm gonna be in Spain pretty soon, man. Going to Las Palmas. Um, going to Barcelona, Las Palmas, Malaga. Yeah, I'm excited. I like Spain. Viva España. Um, bit late in the UK. Cool. What's up? Does Miles do e-commerce? No, he doesn't. Um, well. No, like I'm not an e-com guy. I don't have an e-commerce store. I sell seven or eight physical products, mostly books, CDs, um, card decks, uh, things that are really, really niche specific that are in my wife's name because they're a part of our brand, right? So like audio CDs, because we make MP3. So it just makes sense to get those audio three audio CDs and we run them uh, through Amazon, right? Obviously, so, but I'm, I'm not like into e-commerce as far as like a drop shipper or like a produce things or an FBA guy, because I don't like the margins. I like having 90 plus percent margins. I'm not a fan of 70%, 80% of my revenue going to cost of goods sold. Yeah, the margins, when the margins are that slim, I, I'd rather play the information game personally. Um, Hawaii, what's up? Lincoln, man, that hike, you, you, you ping me on a hike, dude. I'm like, one of these times I'm, I'm going to stop on the big island. I think you're on the big island. And you're gonna, we're going to do a nice hike up there. Croatia's in the house. I'm going to Slovenia, just north of you soon. I'm excited about that. Um, Fergal Downs, what is the best business model to follow in 2018? Affiliate marketing, product launching, Amazon FBA, Shopify drops it, shipping, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very personal question and it's a very good question to be asking. Um, when you do choose your, your approach, remember that you got to stick with it for a few years to really dial it in. So a lot of people were in your, your position, they'll be like, okay, I'll do FBA. And like three months in, they're like, Ooh, this is really tough. And I don't know. Okay. I'll do affiliate now. And uh, four months in, they're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll try this now. And, and they jump around so much that they never might make any progress in one thing. So the, the cool part is every single one of those kind of approaches works, right? The product launching, I don't really understand even what you mean by product launching. Like, are you going to create and launch your own products? I think that's more of an authority site. Um, so one big question is like, what's in your DNA, right? Like what kind of person are you? Are you a like logistics gangster, right? Is the thought of like finding a vendor in China, having things manufactured and put on a ship and shipped over and, and managing your cash flow so that because it's a 30 day shipping crossing of the Pacific. So you got all your money tied up in inventory that's shipping and then your inventory goes into the FBA warehouse and then you gotta get your money out in time to go have more stuff made in China and shipped across and there's another 30 day lag, all your profits tied up on a boat crossing the Pacific Ocean. Like if you can, if your mind can wrap around that and you can be good at that and you're like the thought of those kinds of systems like sound fun to you, maybe that's the direction for you. To me, that sounds horrible and I have friends who deal with that. 
affiliate marketing is great because like I just, I call it information marketing really, because you know, my wife, for example, we create our own information products. We have our own membership course. We do product launches, but we sell a lot of things as affiliates. We make a lot of good, solid, super consistent money as affiliates and have for years and years and years. So like, we're definitely super affiliates, even though we're like personal brands and information marketers. What I like about this approach is any direction that Miles Beckler brand wants to go, it's going to follow, right? I can pivot. I can adapt through the years. I'm kind of a marketing geek. I'm kind of a computer and internet geek. So the odds are very, very good that it's going to be in this realm because I absolutely love this stuff. And I've been doing this since the late nineties. Um, so, but with that said, you know, like what is in your personality? Do you love to write? Like if you love to write blogging, content marketing is great. Do you want to perform and do the YouTube video thing? Like, is there a group of people who you would love to be of service? Is there a group of people who you can be of service to, right? Like who can you help accomplish something that like they're out there searching for help to a problem and you already know the answer. You've done it 20 times over. You have all your friends with it and it's easy to you, right? So it's like, how do you leverage your strengths? Which one of those business models is most closely aligned to your natural strengths and your like God given talents, right? What, what's, where's the alignment there? I always try to look within when it comes to these kind of questions, because when you come within and you do what's in your heart and you do that, that thing that, that you are here on this earth to do fulfillment happens, right? Like I, I know a lot of people making who have made, and I, I, one guy, he made, he sold his Amazon business for like eight, $9 million, right? No, another guy that had an Amazon business doing like 16 grand a month profit. He sold it for a quarter million dollars. They hated those business models. They hated it. They did it for the money. They got to a certain point. They got freaked out that Amazon was going to totally destroy and um, replace them, which Amazon is totally trying to do to everybody who's white labeling things, FBA. Amazon will replace everyone at some point um, because that's what Jeff Bezos and Amazon does. They were all scared that they were their income was going to disappear in a heartbeat. Me with a Miles Becker brand, like I have no fear. Like I will give it all away for free. Everything is golden. I haven't even made my first product yet, right? Like if I needed to... To if something happened in my world and I needed to liquidate and generate additional cash flow, like the goodwill is set in a place where I could obtain that, but I don't even need to do that. And I'm I'm having so much fun doing this that like I look forward to making these videos for you. And when it's that type of a business model, you're winning. And that's what I see at a lot of conferences. I've met a lot of people who make more money than I do, right? FBA do sold only eight, nine million bucks. He sold, right? That's that's a crazy large amount of money he made, right? He was making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month um, in order to generate that kind of uh, a sale price, but he didn't love it, right? So what's the point to me? That's my personal opinion. Some people, whatever, like to each their own, but um, I'm all about do something you love. And, and when it's in alignment with your strengths, it comes a little easier. When it's easier, it can be fun. And when you're helping people and it's easy to you and they're like, whoa, you blew my mind. You totally helped me with that thing that was so difficult. You're like, man, that, that actually felt easy. You get fulfillment and you get a byproduct of, of money and revenue and income and profit. And to me, that's a sweet spot. So it, it's a little in, internal. I think that's, um, I hope that, I hope that wasn't too out there, but that's what I got for you. So, um, Chris Harden, am I using chatbots? No, I'm not. Um, I went through a full, I was, I was like, I was really going down the direction to go there. And I just, my audience is older and I just didn't think I was going to do it right. And I thought like, I've been through some chatbots that were terrible. I've been through some chatbots by some pro guru, ninja, Facebook ads, people, um, they were just creepy, dude, like literally just creepy. And I knew what was going on. And then I thought about it like, man, like if somebody doesn't know this is a bot, this is absolutely creepy. And the number one rule of internet marketing is don't be creepy. Uh, and that dude, I was actually thinking about having him run my Facebook ads. And I was like, dude, you are just, this is not on, no way. Um, so no, I don't, I think they work. I think some people are doing really well. One tip uh, at the DMSS conference in Bali I spoke at, there was a dude from Australia who ran an agency and he used chatbots after someone took an action, it popped up and it said, Hey, I'm a bot. I can answer most of your questions, but if you want to talk to a human, email us at boom. But if you have any questions, just ask here. And I thought that was really smart because he threw out there at the very beginning, Hey, I'm a bot, right? So it's like the pressure's off. And, and if it starts to go haywire, cause I've had bots go haywire on me. Um, if it goes haywire, they're like, all right, this is a bot. I just email that address, right? It's already there, but it's it's when people are trying to do it without letting people know they're trying to do it. And they're trying to actually like, spark, hey, what's your name, right? What's your email address? Like, whoa, dude, you trying to get me on a list from a chatbot? Like, you don't even know me, this is sketchy. Um, so if you're gonna do it, do it right. Um, Gary Patterson, your first live session. What's up, man? Glad you made it here. Um, refined, refined strength. 
Content marketing. How do you reconcile working in a niche with multiple clients when all they want is front page Google rank? Do you bump off others as you go? I can foresee a bottleneck with clients. Yeah, okay. So when I was working and doing SEO services, I would have one client per niche per city, right? Like that was kind of one of my things. So we had, I only had two clients that had overlapping, but they were on opposite sides of the country. One was in Texas, one was up in like, um, Boston area. So I was okay with that because there was physically no overlap and it was a physical location thing. Like people went to the physical location. So there was no overlap there, but if they were in the same city, I personally would have just been like, look, I can only help one of you, um, in that situation because you're right. Like you can't, I, I just, there's, there's this little ethics conflict of interest, right? Like, and one person gets rankings and the other doesn't. And it's like, it could just, it could just be kind of a slippery, slippery slope. Um, so I think that answers your question. Um, but like most of my clients were in very, very different niches. Um, everything from a dude who had a, he bought gold and silver, like a jewelry store that like come sell us your gold and silver to a, a custom aquarium guy to, um, elderly care and, uh, like all over, all over the board. So there was no problem because they weren't all going for the same first page. Uh, but when there was the overlap, they were physically removed in a way that I could go after, you know, Austin and Boston, and there was no way it would overlap and, and it, it worked really well. I hope that answers. I'm, I'm not sure if that totally got it. Um, Max, you're struggling to get your first client as an SEO agency. Any recommendations? Absolutely. Go have more conversations with more business owners, pick up the phones, set up lunch appointments, set up coffee appointments, go into businesses and teach them for free how to kind of leverage the team they have, right? They might have a receptionist girl up front who could write blog content, start doing meetup groups in your local area, teach, 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 just show your community, you can be helpful and do more appointments. So if you did like, I'm expecting at this point, if you're having a tough time, so you're probably talking to four to six business owners every day. Um, if you're talking to four to six business owners every day, five days a week, that's 20 to 30 appointments per week. If you're not there yet, that's, that's the goal. Shake hands in person stuff, no Facebook ads, no cold email scripts, none of that stuff. Go meet the business owners in your area. Cause that's something you can do that. I can't do that. People in India can't do that. All the other spammers in the world who are spamming their inboxes are already doing, you need to stand out. And then I would totally set up a meetup group. I would do a weekly digital marketing meetup. I would look at meetup.com in your area and see what's not there. Um, if there's no digital me marketing meetup, do the digital marketing meetup and just start to teach freely for anybody who shows up. What happens when you teach business owners how to do it all? Like they're gonna be like, oh my God, this is amazing. Nobody on my team's gonna be able to figure this out. Can you do it for me? And the answer to that question is yes. And that's how I worked it. Um, I never did cold anything. Uh, other than that, I also uh, was kind of on social media talking about some of the successes my wife and I were having. Um, and that got me a couple of clients just through, through Facebook, through friends of friends. Um, but, uh, that's it. Go shake more hands. Talk to more people is, is the answer in my opinion. Um, so well, dude, I, I con I answered that earlier. If you missed it, go ahead and hop back and watch the replay once it's up. Um, Medhi, you had a question about video Facebook ad says, does Facebook ad work if you have a service-based business? It sure could. It's all about the offer. It's all about the offer. Um, if it's an emergency service-based business, like plumber, right? It's not going to work, but, um, if there's a service like, you know, home remodels can work. There's a lot of things that, you know, real estate agents can use it. A lot of ways it, it definitely can work. The question is what's the free offer that's going to get them excited to become a lead. And then how are you going to follow up with them and, and offer value in their lives before trying to sell them something? Um, and you just got to figure all that out. So, Again, like I said in the, in the beginning, Facebook ads is fuel. You have to have a fire going and your fire going is a or multiple conversion mechanisms, an opt-in and a sales page. If those things aren't working, Facebook ads are going to do nothing but waste your money, right? So once you get those two things going and you can use it to test, right? You can run 20 bucks, hundred bucks for worth of ads. Be like, does anybody actually opt in? Oh, okay. 7% did not good enough to run consistent ads yet. You need to get that thing up to 30% opt-in rate. But once you find that offer and the messaging that works, then you can run those ads consistently. Um, that's kind of it. So Gareth Busby, a question you've been thinking recently, how do you set up an affiliate link for your products? If you want to sell through others. So it's a part of, it's a part of your shopping cart. Or if it's not, it's a module or something you can add on. So I use Samcart and Thrivecart as my two main carts. And both of those have affiliate programs built in. So I can just add someone. I can let them apply. There's an application process. And then I go in through my shopping cart and I essentially associate 
products with affiliates and then they can log into their dashboard and they can get their affiliate link and then they can go promote my products. Um, so if you don't have a shopping cart that can handle that, sometimes there's like, uh, like if you're member mouth should member mouth doesn't have an affiliate program. Um, WP affiliate is kind of a module. It's another plugin that adds on, um, like the e-store plugin. If you're using that one, I talked about, they have an affiliate module that plugs in. Um, so if, if it's not native, you can usually get uh, an add on of some sort. Um, greetings in Germany. What's up? Push record. Oh, you're in Germany. Awesome. Good to see you on the comments a bunch. Um, how do you do a Facebook sign up email page? Um, so I do all my landing pages with thrive themes, go search the DIY sales funnel video series. I show how to set up a funnel on a WordPress site. Um, and then I run my ads and I link people to there to get them to opt in. Um, Viv in Hong Kong, unbeatable. What's up? Welcome here. So any advice on getting people to a webinar on weight loss where you will sell a webinar series of four webinars using hypnosis for weight loss? Um, Facebook ads to a squeeze page is where I would start. If you don't already have an audience, um, if you, that's, that's the quick way. So uh, Facebook ad to squeeze page of people who might want to be interested or do a lot of content marketing, build the audience through YouTube and through blogging, and then essentially funnel back from there and get them on your list, grow a list, and then offer the webinar to people who are on your email list. Um, cool. Christina, what's up? Good evening to you. I hope all is well. Um, defeating just divorce. What kind of contract legal protection do you recommend for someone who is on a budget? looking to digital. Okay. So you're wanting to create a digital product with someone else and split profits. Look for, um, joint venture agreements is the term that I would look up. And there's probably some, some basic templates. Um, so I don't give legal advice. Like I let lawyers do legal stuff. And honestly, I don't do joint ventures very often at all because partnerships are a little weird, but yeah, look for a joint venture agreement. I'm sure there's a template, like a standardized template you can use. And then obviously like hiring a, a lawyer to, customize a pre-made one. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're working with somebody, I've done joint venture deals on total handshakes. Um, and it's worked out really, really well because we really know the people and, and the relationship was, was solid. Um, and what we did is we did just a few month kind of a test. It was like, Hey, let's do this for three months. Let's see if it works. If you guys are okay with it, I'm okay with it. We'll keep going. And it, it was a success and we're still doing it to this day. Um, Emery Vamp, you're experiencing a huge drop in sales since the new ad manager show up. Anything about Facebook or you need to edit your next campaigns? No, like I don't know if it's the new ad manager, like the timing could have been similar. I would look at, I mean, you gotta be monitoring your KPIs, right? And like your KPIs shouldn't necessarily fall off a cliff. Generally, they're gonna like degrade incrementally. Sometimes starting a campaign over, like literally stopping it and restarting it. The way I operate, so I start, I do the, the, the $5 ad sets and I'll get 30 or 40 of them going. I whittle it down. Then I got like eight or nine that are performing. I increase the budget on. And then all of a sudden it slips down to four, then to two. And then at that point, I just turn the whole thing off. I let it sit off for like a week and I start the whole process over again. And I do 30 or 40 more um, ad sets and I start over again. And sometimes what's really interesting is when I start over, some ones that didn't perform last time start to perform this time. Uh, keep an eye on your relevance score. Uh, make sure your relevance score is at least like an eight. And, um, you know, it's your conversion rate shouldn't change mid game, right? Like if you've got a good enough traffic and a good conversion rate like that, that's going to stay relatively consistent. If you aren't delivering as much traffic, maybe a heavy hitter came into your space and is gobbling up all of the good traffic and you have a low relevance score and a low bid and you're not getting the quality traffic. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the game of Facebook is a lot of this kind of debugging, like, Oh, why did that just all change? Like, I don't know, like, okay, well, let me go test something new. Let me go turn this on. Let me go look at that research, dig in. Um, that, that's, that is kind of the work in there. Um, Tapas Fleming biz. What is up? So your website has several niches served. It's using funnels for each niche. A good way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and then the follow-up question is, do you recommend a website for each niche? Like how similar are they, right? Can it be logically in one brand? If it can be housed by one brand, I think managing one website with multiple funnels is the easiest way. And it gives you that kind of like adaptability and the, the ability to go wide and deep with one site. So all of your domain authority that you build over time is going to be focused on one website versus splitting that across. And your energy will be focused on one website versus splitting that across. So like, I guess one question I have for you is, do you have one successful website with a funnel already running? and you're already doing really, really well, and you're looking to add on a second one, because 
you can't necessarily theoretically do three things at once, right? Like my wife and I worked for seven or eight years on one website. We got that one website cranking out enough money to where we paid off all of our debt. We built up an emergency fund, paying our taxes like adults, uh, all the adulting things, 401ks and all that ridiculous adult based stuff. Then literally seven years after six, seven years after getting that first site really running a uh, total of seven years of working on one site, we started, I started the miles Decker brand, right? So like the one enemy and what slowed me down so much is I jumped around from niche to niche and I can do that and I'll do that. And snowboardbums.com, pokerchippals.com, leftcoastcartel.com, um, New Mexico asset management.com. Man, I could go on plrarticles.com, uh, explosional team build.com. Like the number of sites I built, all they did was distract me. I made over 10 grand with several of those, but they just distracted me because they weren't the long term thing. So, like, do one thing, get really good at one thing, get one funnel cranking, prove the model, prove that you've got what it takes to be an internet marketer, that you like it, that you're creating content, that you're marketing to the email list, that you're growing, and then maybe consider a second one. But, like, all we need is one solid niche in order to to really become successful. Like there's no need to do, like I don't run seven niche sites to be successful, right? Like it can be done with one. And I I think the the simpler we make our online businesses, the better we are long-term. Um, Brian just started his website and he's connecting with owners of dogs who are suffering from cataracts. Interesting. I think that's an amazing niche. What do I think of that niche? I think it's amazing. Are you crossing too far into the veterinarian realm? You're no vet. No, I don't think you are. Um, I would, I would, wonder if cataracts is how what the search volume is around that right like i think that is there a way to take that as your starting point but to build that under an umbrella that has the ability to help with uh hip dysplasia or something right like that's a very common that's one of my dogs when i was a kid growing up uh pepper dog died because essentially his hips kind of gave out german shepherd thing and um he couldn't stand up anymore and we had to put him down and like so had we known how to avoid that because like it's pretty well known in those breeds that, that that's pretty common right so like like i'm not saying do that too i'm just saying like get the cataract thing going do all your content marketing there but like if you're too far into a niche you might be like okay like i've done everything cataract for dogs ever what now? And if your brand doesn't allow you the ability to adapt and get a little wider, this is almost the exact opposite of what I just said in the one before. So I think that's kind of cool contrast. Um, I'm maybe contradicting myself in, in, in series, but like have enough breadth of niche to do a little bit more. Um, but I think it's a really good idea to dominate that space first, become the pet cataract person, get the Amazon Kindle book out on how to prevent pet cataracts, right? And then what's that next most common thing that pet owners have problems with? And you can learn that from surveying the list that you build from this first one. And, and like that's, you know, we are problem solvers as internet marketers, we're problem solvers for other people. So finding out what your audience's next problems are, and then building more content and helping them do that, that'll just attract more segments of the dog owner niche from there. But all of it obviously is under the dog owner um, kind of range. So it does make sense. Um, FK2, you have interest to start a business in the video game niche. Awesome. Do I know anyone? Oh, there's so many successful people. Do I know anyone with success in the video game niche? Absolutely. Um, do I know my name? No, but I mean, there's like, dude, go to Twitch. There's I mean, pro gamers. There's pro gamers who make millions of dollars a year playing video games. Like it's a real thing. Like, so yeah, absolutely. Of course it's totally, it's totally able to work. Um, so your message like was limited. You want to say thank you for the inspiration. Oh, my pleasure, Brian. I'm happy to like, like being able to get back and share like this, you know, Wednesday night, seven o'clock. Like, I don't know, like, this is awesome. I think this is fun to get to give. Um, I didn't find anybody like in this position who was actually willing to give helpful information when I was getting going. Uh, and that frustrated me to a very strong degree because I had no money to buy all their expensive courses. And when I did have money to buy their courses, turns out they sucked and they didn't actually help me. They just cost me a bunch of money and sent me backwards. And I'm like, this is horrible. So like, I'm just getting to be the change I want to see in the world, right? That's the, the famous quote. So that's what I'm doing. Um, Zeus Pets, you spent like 200 bucks without sales on Facebook ads. Yeah, yeah, that's common. But like, what's your average customer value, right? If you make $500 from a new customer, then 200 bucks is like scratching the surface. You could spend another 300, another $285 and get a sale and you make $15 profit. So it, it, it's all perspective. It depends on what, what you're selling, on what that actually means. Um, 
what do I think a decent Isaac? What do I think a decent budget to start playing with Facebook ads is? So this again, like to kind of follow along what I just said, um, I think your ad budget is more of a factor of how much will you make from a new customer, right? So if you're gonna make five hundred dollars on a new customer, I think having five to ten x in a budget to really get that thing dialed. Because once you find something that works, you can live like I'm living off of the results from what I learned in campaigns in 2014, 2015. Like I'm not adapting. I went through some really expensive courses. They didn't teach me much at all. Like I learned a couple of little tricks, but the, the core of what I'm doing on Facebook, I taught myself back in the day and I'm just doing that same thing over and over and over and over again, maybe testing a new one click upsell here and there, testing a new little bit and piece here and there, but there's no magic beyond that. So if your average order value is a hundred bucks, like within 500 bucks, you should be seeing results. You should be getting your first sales. And then once you get your first sale, your second sale should come a lot sooner and your third sale should come sooner, et cetera, et cetera, because you should be testing things in the process and you should find split test A, B, C, ah, B gets more opt-ins, split test A, B, ah, B gets more conversions. So when you run that funnel as B, B directly, you should get closer to conversions more quickly, but it takes money to test all of those varieties uh, or variations and then study copywriting become a copywriter like you can't like you have to write great copy like the the act of running an ad with rubbish copy will never get you anywhere the act of building a funnel with rubbish copy will never get you anywhere um the funnel and the ad are just tools and like you got to sharpen that tool with and the copywriting is is the magic sauce that makes it work um that's the umami um, how do I feel about the automotive industry? Profitable, everything, yeah, for sure. Totally could be profitable, Mark, absolutely. Um, teaching people how to do, like, there's a guy on YouTube called Chris Fix. And he's got 3 million subscribers. That dude is, and he just, he like, he kept breaking his car and like fixing it. Like, here's how to repair, replace a water pump on a 1985 Ford Ranger. And he just videotape himself fixing it. And how did he brakes on this? And how do you brakes on that? Now he bought a Mustang from an auction and he turned into a drift car. Like he's having all kinds of fun with it now. Uh, he's like six or seven years into putting out videos. Um, but he's, I'm, I'm confident that he is paying for the life he is enjoying living right now through being helpful to people wanting to learn how to fix their vehicles. Um, use my law of attraction. What email autoresponder program do I use? I use two of them. Aweber and Active Campaign. Aweber is simple, beginner friendly, bulletproof, and has better deliverability. Active Campaign is a bit fancier, much more complicated, offers the ability to do some really interesting retargeting stuff, and it also manages my membership program access. Um, I'm paying a guy $500 a month to simply help me continue to make progress in active campaign. It's too much for my little brain to figure out on my own. It's kind of more of a time thing. I just don't have the energy right now to, like my energy is better served being a value to you than it is to spending 20, 30 hours, 40 hours aggressively in a month's time to really learn active campaign. So I'm just hiring a guy to, to help me with that stuff. So that's why I say Aweber is simple, straight shot. I ran on Aweber, I still run on Aweber. We went to Aweber in 2010, um, probably sent out 20 million emails through Aweber and they hit the inbox better than anyone. I don't care what anybody says, like active campaigns delivery kind of sucks, um, but they run my membership. So I'm kind of married to them at this point, which is an awkward position to be in. Uh, so if you're really, really, really want, you could do automations and tagging stuff in, in Aweber now too. Um, I think most people, Aweber is the best place to get started, to keep it simple, to keep it running. Um, and then, and or active campaign, if you want something that's got more potential for uh, fancy dynamic segmenting. But um, I ran it for a year, never set up an entire segment, did nothing with all that fancy potential. Um, and not until I hired this guy to come in monthly to help me out with it. Um, but now that he's here, we're making progress and we're doing cool things. And I'm gonna do updates on how I'm running it with him um, once we get this, the next couple things built out. But um, it's, it's a lot of work to do some of that fancy stuff. How do you improve skills at conversion, Miles Zeus Pets? That is the question, man. That is the million dollar question. That is a million dollar question. Um, number one, you read books. So John Caples, Dan Kennedy, and Eugene Schwartz. Those are three authors. Um, Dan Kennedy is the only one who's still alive. Uh, these guys wrote direct mail response copy back in the day. Um, study those guys and then handwrite 
the sales letters that are absolutely crushing it. Um, and literally like one of these things, pen, handwrite, not type type. There's something about handwriting it out and um, you can go to swiped.co and you can look at some of the old advertisements from Eugene Schwartz, from John Caples, um, Gary Halbert. Uh, he's another guy worthy of, of reading. Um, he's no longer on the earth either. But um, yeah, like you gotta, so you gotta read the books to understand how it works. Then you gotta practice and the practice is writing sales copy. So you can write other people's sales copy. There's something that happens when you write out enough sales letter, the, the wording, the tempo, the pacing, the, it just, it starts to, it just starts to ingrain like your neuro networks begin to fire like a copywriter through mimicking what the great copywriters of yesteryear did. Um, and then you got to write lots of copy. You got to write headlines, write lots and lots of headlines and start running tests, start running traffic to things and seeing if, if, uh, things convert. I know one kid, I met him at traffic and conversion a couple of years ago, a uh, young kid, he was in college. He's like, I want to be a copywriter. I was like, dude, you can do it, man. And he wrote a little bit of copy for me and got him on Upwork. And now he's writing copy for other people and he's doing emails and i think copywriting as far as a service if i was to do like a job job like like man being a copywriter there's there's a lot of money in it like um dan kennedy won't he won't even touch a client for under a hundred dollars cash plus a big percentage of the back end right like he looks every client to him is a few hundred thousand dollars um and copywriting is one of the only businesses i know that that has that level uh, but for us my wife and i when we get copywriting dialed it's like you know we we put a new vsl out and we'll probably make I mean, multiple, multiple six figures off that VSL over the next several years, right? And we have several of those out. And when we, when you nail a, a good letter, like you can make a million bucks off a really, 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 really compelling letter that has a really good product. And if you've got an audience, um, so practice is the ultimate answer. So FIEA, is that financial independence early? Interesting. Um, Hey, Miles, I own a fairly new store, five days old, averaging one sale a day. That's awesome. Well, what could I recommend you to do to run a campaign targeting for conversions or leads? Conversions, for sure. Premium accessories plus, for sure, conversions. Um, so go look through your data. Try to let the, the, let the data direct you, let the data guide you what products are selling. Is it the same product over and over and you got 40 products and this one keeps selling? Run all your ads to that one. Um, and just, just, practice, right? Like I would run website conversion campaigns and I would run them to the add to cart conversion because you need 50 conversions per week in order to see the audience, um, in order to get Facebook's machine learning working for you. So that's how I would go about it. And, um, copywriting is key. So yeah. All right. Um, Christina, the Logitech C922, it's under hundred bucks. Yeah, I think I might be got the C920 cause I was, I'm a cheap ass or something. Maybe, maybe I got the 22. Um, but yeah, that webcam is, is a dope webcam for sure. It's super easy to use. So Rowdy asks, Facebook ads have been crazy expensive lately. Is Facebook advertising dead? I've heard Instagram is the new platform. So Instagram and Facebook are the same thing, right? Like that really is the same thing. So you're, I wouldn't expect, I mean, to me, Instagram was more expensive for me and my niche. Um, but I think it's because my demographics not all on Instagram. So there was maybe more competition. So like the biggest answer is, test, go test Instagram ads, separate it out, run a Facebook campaign, run an Instagram campaign, see what your cost per lead, cost per acquisition, whatever your KPIs you measure are, and literally pin them head to head against each other and see which one wins. Then do more of what wins. Um, Facebook advertising is not dead. It's going to get more expensive. It's not going to die. It's just going to get, it's going to price out little advertisers like us. And they, I mean, Zuckerberg's big dream is to have Nike, um, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and all these multi-billion dollar Procter and Gamble tied, right? Like I clean shirt on, it's a tied ad. Like their goal, brilliant ad, by the way, I gotta do, I should have done a freaking video on that. It was so good. Um, but like Facebook's goal is to get the multi-billion dollar corporations dumping their branding advertising into the platform because they're used to wasting money very effectively. They don't do copywriting like we talk about. We little marketers have to do direct response copywriting because we need to say like, oh, I put in a thousand, I got a thousand out. Because if I'm, if I'm going cash flow negative a couple of grand, I'm done. I'm not even gonna get to a couple, like I'm done at this point, right? So I'm, I'd be looking for the next platform. Uh, Pinterest ads are a pretty good product. Last time I tried it, it wasn't cost effective for me personally, but they've really, really developed their ad platform, their ad program uh, over the last couple of years. It works very similar to Facebook. You'll you'll notice a very sim 
similarity, but like boosting pins and engagement is still a little um, abstract. It's in, in certain niches, it, it absolutely crushes it. But yeah, like this is the game, right? Like I, I rode the MySpace wave up and down, uh, I rode the early Twitter wave up and down. I rode the Google easy wave up and down and like, I was getting 300,000 visits per month from Facebook organic traffic for free for years on end until like a year and a half ago. So like rode that up and down. Like this is the natural progress of things. And at some point we will be priced out um, and, and others will take the place of that. And as the attention shifts over to Snapchat and whatever platforms are coming up, maybe distributed on the blockchain or something, um, then, then people's attention will follow and the advertising dollars will eventually follow. Um, so Eric Lovin, you just found out that WordPress comes in two flavors with different companies. Funny that you never heard me mention that. Okay, um, do a video on that. That's going on. So the .org, the .com, um, one sec, I'm putting that on my notes. I'll probably do a video on that on Friday because you're right. And I remember the first time I, installed WordPress and I went to wordpress.com to try to log in. I was like, why is this not working? Crazy. Because that, that sort of thing, like I just don't even think about that at this point, which is kind of goofy. Um, so thanks for the heads up on that, Eric. I do appreciate that. Uh, Jimmy Chua, what's up, man? You're, you're going, you're in Singapore. So you love the idea of a 90 day challenge, keep things going. Yep. Get content out, adapt and go. That's it, man. That's, that's the key. Um, FI says that Instagram ads are more populated as well. Um, what do I think of VidIQ and TubeBuddy? So I tested both of them. I think that both of those platforms are designed to get people to become affiliates for those tools, to sell those tools, to try to create a need for something that's not necessary with a caveat of I have a few years of SEO experience. So I didn't feel like they added value and all I thought they were doing, it seemed like they were just like, go steal their tags and stuff their tags in your tag setup, right? Like the whole um, change all your ad, your end screens to your most recent video to push your, your most recent video up. Like I understand the theory of how that's gonna get my view volume up, but I'd prefer, I think about my users, right? I'm like, I would rather my video link to the most relevant video that's gonna carry that user onto the next video that's gonna help them not to try to game the system for more views. Uh, I know a lot of people who use them and like them. I tested both. Uh, I preferred vidIQ personally, but it wasn't enough for me to keep it around and keep working with it. Cause to me, it's like in the keyword tool, what's the keyword around this topic, get the keyword in, write my content, put in my tags and I'm out, I'm done. Like, that's it. Like, I don't really care what other people are doing. Um, I'm just like trying to make it as optimized as I can. And then I go on to the next, but I think it is worthy of reiterating that I've, I've got a lot of experience as an SEO. So what may becomes second nature to me might be what that tool help could help you with. Um, so it very well could be uh, a value add for you there. Um, I know they got a free trial, like you can definitely test it. And if I remember correctly, vidIQ, if you like install it and then like leave or uninstall it, it'll like give you a one month free coupon code or something. So like play around with that. See if you, you find a coupon code, test them. If you feel like it helps your workflow and if you feel like it helps you um, and, and you see a, a positive result, like run with it for sure. Um, so Mark J, how do I feel about networking with other independent websites and blogs? Um, so like, I think people do it very successfully. Like really that's how joint ventures happen. That's how um, great guest post relationships form, right? I've gotten some pretty awesome guest posts. I've gotten some pretty good podcast guest spots recently. And that's just because I've been networking with other internet marketing kind of entrepreneurs. I've been going to events, shaking hands, meeting people. Um, with that said, I don't really let anyone onto my site as guest posts or anything like that. I'm very hesitant to link out, but I'm all about trying to get those links in. And it's just how I play the game. Um, so that requires me to give lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of value and maybe not get as many backlinks as I could, but um, that's how I approach it. So I, to me, Nothing beats that that build forming relationships, meeting people, shaking hands. Like like I just actually had an email back and forth with Andre Chaperone like today. Like I actually know the dude, right? He knows of me. We've we've connected repeatedly. We haven't met in person. I'm gonna be near his home. I'm gonna ping him and see if we can maybe bump into each other in person. But like that dude's on a level, right? I look at Andre Chaperone like, ooh, that guy's that guy's a badass in the internet marketing space. But sure enough, over the last several years, buying his courses, engaging in his groups, um, becoming affiliate, sending sales, like like I've just I've helped get myself noticed as an action taker who shows up. 
um, and is consistent. And I try to give value in the areas that I can that are around what he's doing. Um, and I would say there's a little bit of a relationship there. I'm not going to call anything due. I'm not doing it for any specific reason. Um, but but that is, it, it is totally worth it in my opinion. Um, and that's part of why I went to so many conferences and marketing events for so many years. I'm kind of over that at this point, unless, unless they fly me out so I can talk on stage. I'm, but that's just a personal um, thing at this point. Style Sense Plus, could I do a video on showing how I map out and title a series of videos and their sequence after I've done my keyword research? So the honest truth, I don't map things out beforehand. Like I am so fire ready aim, it's ridiculous. I jump in and I start recording and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, that that's like part one. Like I can do that now. And then my approach is usually I've got like four of these kind of together now. And then I'm like going backwards and linking them together and optimizing them after the fact. So I think in a perfect world, I would plan more, but like I would probably never would take any action if I was planning so much, right? So really, I mean, I I really am. And this guy I've hired to, to, to help me out with my autoresponder stuff, boy, he's just like, you know, how'd you get a list of, we are so, I'm so like, really focused energy in this area and then I disappear and then I'm over here and like it just it's it's, it's kind of haphazard and I think success is messy is is a, an idea that I'm coming to terms with and I'm embracing because I, I did not plan out much um when I did the the DIY sales funnel video series I I was like okay I just started with one video I was like I'm gonna show how to do a video and then I did that one and I was like well I missed a couple of pieces. I, I got to really do that. And then it turned out to number two and then it, it, it evolved on its own, like organically. Um, with that said, I have a video, obviously. Um, it's called The Trick to Creating Online Courses. Watch that. It has a framework and I have cohesively created a few things that were very large, like my um, my opt-in giveaway, the, the side hustle to million dollar business giveaway. I use that framework for that. And all of my on-stage speeches, um, when I do like an hour long talk that's focused, cause like if I'm on stage, I'm gonna be really focused. Um, like all those PowerPoint presentations, I use that same framework. So I think that would be the framework. And so the video title is the shortcut to creating online courses or how to create great online courses. Um, you'll find it if you search that on my channel. Cool. Um, Tyler Pratt, you're on day 360 straight of videos. Are you serious? Like that's a new record. Tyler Pratt, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you're on there, Tyler, shoot me a link. I think it's under your name. I want to find that. Um, I want to see your, I want to see that like 360 straight videos. The, the only other person I know who did more than that or not, who did more than I did was Jay Burnham and, um, the mighty investor, Tom, Tom did more than I did too. And I think 150 or 160 was the highest I've ever heard of anybody. So, wow. If you're at 360 straight videos, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on it. Are you having fun? Are you seeing the results or like, are you still excited and fired up? Is it a grind? Like I'd love a little update on that. If you're, if you're there, just chat me in the comments. I'd love to see that. Um, Chris Trevino, you're having a difficult time finding a serious vector designer that can create a large amount of vectors with licenses for reuse with the business. Um, man, like I, if I was looking for designer, I'd probably go to onlinejobs.ph and I would try to find somebody in the Philippines who has an excellent uh, graphics because like graphics is, you know, English as a second language is fine. And I've found like my guy in the Philippines who does my graphics and does my WordPress stuff, he is so good and like, it's such a cool relationship with his family. His family is in an interesting, unique situation um, with some health stuff and and like how well I'm able to pay him and help them. And it just it just works really well. Um, so I, I would go to, to onlinejobs.ph and I would try to find somebody in the Philippines personally. Um, but Upwork is another place. You're just gonna pay a lot for anyone in the US. Like illustrator designers in the US are gonna be like, oh, I'm $170 an hour and I'm snooty. And I'm like, they're not, I'm making things up. Um, yeah, cool. So Farima, why do I recommend conversion ads versus lead ads on Facebook? So I recommend them because a lead ad, they don't go to my landing, they don't go to my thank you page, right? A lead ad happens inside of Facebook and then they have no idea why you're, they're getting your emails because they took an action in Facebook. When they go on a conversion ad, they leave Facebook, they go to my opt-in page and then they go see my one-time offer. They don't see my one-time offer from a lead ad every time and that's what I'm after is showing that one-time offer. So that's why. How do I know if my ad is performing well for the budget? 
So look at my video series on how to analyze Facebook ads data. I did four or five videos following one ad set from when it was like brand new over the course, I believe it was four weeks. I, I checked in once a week to follow the ad. And I talked about, here's why I'm turning this ad set off. Here's why I'm turning that ad set off. Here's why I'm not touching anything this week because everything's perfect. Um, and I showed you where I look for the numbers and that that's, that's it. Um, can you have multiple landing pages and funnels working on the same domain? Absolutely, Darcy. Yeah, that's how I run. I've got three on my website. My wife's got several on hers and that that is how we run. Because you gotta think like within your audience, there's different entrance points for the same goal, right? Like, like people want a thing and well, they could be thinking about it logically, emotionally, right? Like different ways in and you wanna have a theoretically a landing page and an entrance point that meets them where they're at. Um, Tyler Pratt took nine months until your channel blew up. That's Awesome. That's so cool. So you literally did a video a day, every day for nine months before it blew up. Most people would quit. Like hats off to you, like props to you. Most people would give up and say this stuff doesn't work, but you didn't, you stuck with it. And I hope you're seeing the sky's the limit. I hope you're, I hope you're going to blow up faster than I do. I would love to see that. We might have to do a little collab. My, I might be interested if you're open to doing like an interview or something on a live, that could be fun. Um, unbeatable. My blog's gone from 800 page views a year to 42 K bomb organic traffic, organic social media traffic, 85%, 600 subscribers. Um, daily content's good. Awesome. You got online courses, but no money. Keep building. Yeah. Keep building. And then focus on, do you have a pop-up showing up on all your content, right? Like get them on your list, get them on your list, get them on your list. My number one goal with my businesses is getting people on my list. It is not selling them something. So many people miss this. Like my number one goal out of all of my businesses, get them on my list. Cause once they're on my list, I can build a relationship. I can build trust. I can give value and I can demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can help them in their life. And when I've demonstrated beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can help you in your life, when I recommend a product or I offer a thing, you're like, well, he's already helped. Like I know this dude's real. That's why they buy is because of what happened before. That's the difference between marketing and sales. That's the difference between influence and persuasion, right? Like it's that, that, um, giving results in advance. So I would say like, I would just go really, really focused on making sure that every blog post has an in-text link that'll get them onto my list. I'd make sure I have a ribbon up top. I'd make sure I have a pop-up that shows up every single time on every single page. I know we hate it as users, but they work. I'm still getting like 8% conversion rate on my pop-up on my website. And I get a lot of return visitors to my website. It's crazy. Um, but it works. So let's do what works. And remember the pop-up's going to give them something they love. That's going to help them. And then your follow-up emails are going to give them something they love. That's going to help them. And then email more. Like, are you emailing four or five times a week? If not do that surprising because you give, give, give. Now I got to sell something. I got to offer something. Give, give, give. I'll do, I'll throw jabs for, and jab meaning a free giveaway. Like it's Gary Vaynerchuk's jab, 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 right hook. Like I'll give free stuff away over and over and over and over and over. And all of a sudden I'm like, man, I've just been giving free stuff for a couple of weeks. I should probably like offer a pro offer something. Cause I have some products and services that I, I truly recommend. I use, I've got great value. Sure enough, I go find one and I kind of tie it into the story and I offer it and make a few grand. And like, then I go back to giving value and it's, it's about connecting people with what they want. Um, and so that's, that's it. But yeah, yeah. Keep going. I think it's cool. Um, Warren Chu. Uh, it's my pleasure, man. I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, so Warren Chu was inspired by the arbitrage marketing video. How do I estimate time and cost upon starting relative to project scope? Dude, that's the biggest challenge. And I underbid one project and I, I, I pretty much worked for like $6 an hour on that project and I never underbid it again. So there's kind of ways to maybe put um, like, break it into phases and, and set the, the payments per phase. But you, that is an art. I mean, I, I don't have an actual answer for that because it's just something you learn when you go through the process of building WordPress over and over, or when you have a team who you do that with and you hire them to do it over and over, you just know what the associated cost is. And one of my things I started doing after I kind of made the mistake and, and underbid a job was like, okay, I think, I think the job should be 1500 and I would like add 50%. And that 50% was my, I probably underbid this and a couple of times that got me that, I mean, it saved my tail for sure. But that was one of the things I did is it usually like most projects, it's like a house renovation or something, right? Like takes longer than you expect and it costs more than you expect. And that is kind of a truth. So build that into your package, right? Be like, all right, I think I can do that for 1500 bucks for a new website. 
I'm going to go ahead and make that a $2,250 package or a $1,995 package or, you know, bump it up, put some sort of an extra bump on the back end, but you're just, you're just going to learn. And another thing I did is I just did hourly and I would say, look, I estimate this is going to take 20 hours. I'm 25 bucks an hour. So I estimate this is going to be this much money to you, but we need to do it hourly because I can't tell for sure. And we won't know until we get into it. It's like, so I, I had a, um, a contractor come into our house and, and remove a wall. And he was like, I think it's going to be this, but we won't know till we tear out that wall. Cause once we see what's inside of that wall, like, I don't know how the electricals run. I don't know if that beam is load bearing or not. And depending on what we find, once we remove things, that's really going to determine the ultimate cost. So I think it's going to be here, but it kind of could do this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get you on at this hourly rate and I'll just track all the hours to get it done. And I'll update you as you go. And that worked really well for me. And it turned out it was actually a really easy job, which was awesome. And it was less expensive than he expected. Um, so that kind of an approach can be in the benefit of the end user. Um, but like if you're you're, if you're just a straight $30 an hour and you've got a developer who you know on Upwork is 15 bucks an hour, you have a $15 an hour arbitrage for shaking the hand, making the deal happen, passing along the data and running the quality assurance on the back end. Right. So if that's an, like, that's a personal thing. And that's how I played small numbers. I, I made myself so inexpensive. It was really difficult for a business owner to say no to me. Um, I had to hustle extra hard in that approach, but like it worked for me. Um, I know some people who go straight to the high end and they're like, I'm a hundred bucks an hour and they still hire a $20 an hour person to do all the work and they make the middle. And then there's a more wiggle room obviously in that. So it's kind of a question of what your market can handle and, um, trial and error ultimately really trial and error. Um, so Jamillions, you're going to meetups for your marketing arbitrage business. Good job. Um, do I have any other suggestions this is where to find clients? Yeah. So, I think running the the meetup is definitely like running a meetup and being the guy in the front of the room is the next level, right? Because if you're going to other people's meetups, you're it's it's just a little bit different energy, right? When people come to your meetup, it's it's definitely a, a posturing and a positioning thing. Um, so I I would I personally would just talk to and ask a lot of questions to the business owners in my community. That it was I literally and I think it's. I'm naturally curious. I was, I was that kid that followed my mom around. Like, why, why, why is that like that? Why is that? What's that? Why? Like literally like I was that annoying kid for sure. Um, so I don't know if it's in my DNA or what, but I just naturally ask people questions. And even to this day, man, I'll get like waitresses dropping life stories on me at my wife thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. I don't know what it is, but I'll just like, Hey, how you doing today? Cool. Yeah. Oh, nice day. All of a sudden it's like, Oh yeah, well, let me tell you what happened. And it's just like, boom, it comes out. So like there's, I don't, I don't know what that is, but there's something in the way I approach human interaction and interpersonal communication that I get people to tell me what their problems are in their business. I get business owners that they just open up. Oh yeah, I get my traffic from here and I get that and like da da da. And like I will just browse in stores and talk to people and and it opened up from there. Um, Chamber of Commerce meetings, BNI Business Networking International. They are a paid one, but you can go to a few of them uh, for free. Then I would start to look at like, is there like I don't know how big of a city you're in, but like is there like a Caldwell Banker? Um, office that has a bunch of reps and could you go in and do like, can you get a bit right? Like, um, like a comedian's got a bit. So I've got like my speaking bit is Facebook ads right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually finally, I, I got my second one developing. That's going to be the 90 day challenge stuff and the authority stuff. Cause that's, that's more in my heart to be honest. But like, can you put together a little 30 minute presentation that's really valuable? That's actually giving them value on like, look, you need a WordPress blog. Here's the numbers on why, here's what happens when you do it right. Here's how to set it up. And here's how to do content marketing and go in and teach like a group, like an office of realtors at their, their monthly meeting. And you go drop that. And they're like, Whoa, this is great. And then they're like, I don't want to do the work. Will you do it for me? And you're like, I, I can handle a couple of clients. Yes. Right. Like how do you put yourself in that kind of a position where you get to be a guest speaker is kind of the next level I would think about. Um, Craigslist, I, I would definitely be posting ads on Craigslist. I would definitely, definitely, definitely be posting ads on Craigslist um, in the gigs, uh, in the resume section maybe. Um, and then looking through on like needed on Craigslist on people who are looking for help in the areas on Craigslist. Uh, you could even look at job postings for people wanting a web dev or somebody to help with marketing. Be like, look, like I'm, I'm not available for a full-time job because I'm a consultant, but I'd be interested in sitting down talking with you, showing you how I could possibly help you and grow and, and try to come in as a contractor and not an employee. Um, few ideas for you. I hope that gives you at least one or two that makes you go, aha, I'll do that. 
Um, cool. Where are we here? Um, wow. Awesome. We've got some trolls up in here. Let me go ahead and report you're done from the channel forever. Wrecked. That just happened. Um, I lost my place. Sorry. Give me one second. I'm going to find my place here. Um, Canada, Morocco, Brazil. That's awesome. Awesome. Oh, man, I'm getting so much positive feedback. I really appreciate you guys. This is cool. Um, all right. So, Brian, the dog cataract niche, the follow up. So, you currently have a forum and a blog on your site. Are you forcing yourself to put out too much content? Should you start with just one? Nah. I think I think a forum and a, and a I think a forum can be great. Forums are difficult because you have to like uh, moderate and there's just, there's like community management. So it's just a different kind of work, but like a great forum that gets people talking about things, you get user generated content. So in theory, if you get a forum firing and you become the be all end all forum in that niche, like that could be a huge benefit to you long-term. Um, so I think it's good, but it takes a lot of work to manage and to build community and Oftentimes you have to seed the conversations and try to get things going. It can be difficult. We actually tried to run a um, forum on our site for a while. It worked for a little bit and it just, we ended up like crushing it because it didn't work for us. Um, so that's what I got. Um, dude, I totally lost my place here. All right, there we go. How would you do, so FI, how would you go about doing a Facebook retargeting campaign as you have 100K events on your Pixel? So you just set up an ad set and display it to the Pixel. I've got like 500 or 600,000 people on my Pixel and I just show it to that. If you wanna make separate audiences for different things that happen, you can go create custom audiences for like visited this blog post or visited this page, but you could also just create one campaign and run it to everybody. Um, so blog, dog cataract niche, how should you start driving traffic? Tough to know who has dogs with cataract. Figure you'd go for people. Yeah, so like um, I, I did a video that that's called, you can't actually drive traffic. You can like traffic is, right? Like traffic is already happening. Like I don't, nobody creates traffic. We just get in front of traffic. So think about how people who have pets who maybe have their eyes are going. I'm guessing that's what cataract is. Um, they might turn to, Amazon looking for a book on how to help. So writing a Kindle book could be a way in. Um, blogging, creating a YouTube channel, like putting out content, you meet people where they're at. Because these people who have these dogs who have cataracts, they visit Google, they visit YouTube, they visit Amazon, they probably visit Facebook, they might visit Pinterest, right? So like you find out, know who they are and where they're at, and then just go produce great valuable content to that individual that's native to that platform and that's how we actually obtain traffic right it's getting in front of the traffic like like the traffic is a river we're just trying to like throw a net out in front of that river that's really attractive for people in some regards so you got to create a lot of content i don't think facebook pages um make that much sense but it's it's writing blog posts and that's where i was saying like what are the other things that those dog owners are thinking about and answering those questions as well through content um so dude hack, you follow the indexing video. Awesome. It's showing 146 URLs submitted and 12 indexed. Um, 146 seems crazy. You just launched the website. Yeah. So look into it. Something's off. Like you have a plugin somewhere that's creating like a translated version or something's happening. And, and once you identify what that is, you, you do want to clean that up for sure. Um, Derek Richardson, what are average conversion rates at each stage of an information product and or subscription funnel? Uh, opt-in landing page purchase. Cool. So like I got two sets of numbers. So I'm gonna start with a baseline. This is like the bare minimum you want to get to before you're going to be able to like really consistently run traffic. So click through rate on your ad from the link 3%, then 25% opt-in rate on the landing page, and then a 1% conversion rate on the OTO. Okay. So 3% click through on the ad, 25% on the opt-in and then a 1% on the OTO. Now, when you're like cranking and you're like, yeah, I got this going, that is usually like six to 8% click-through rate, 40% opt-in rate, 2% conversion rate. And the reason I give you two sets of numbers is, number one, like, are you even at that lower baseline number? If not, find out what's the furthest from that number and work on it first. Split test one thing at a time, right? You don't split test your ad or split test your landing page, right? Split test one thing at a time, but find which number is farthest off 
um, and then work with that one. So the landing page is usually the one that's like, you got to get that landing page up over 25%. A lot of people are sitting at 15% or so. And with that, the difference is, you know, one in four people to one in like seven, one in six. And like that, that will help your numbers all the way down your line. Um, the, the upping your conversion on your OTO, that's tough. Writing a full new video sales letter that takes a lot of life energy. It's worth it. Sometimes you could split test a different headline and a different like hook or lead in um, to your current sales messaging. That can get you a bump and that's a little bit easier of a test. But yeah, like three, 25 and one, if you're at that already, then the numbers move up and then you want to see 642. Right. So if you're already above 325 one, then cool. Now use these upper, use the pro level limits and, and see which one is farthest off from that next level limits and go optimize that to the next step. Um, uh, JK music. What's the best way to find your niche? It comes from within. I've got a whole video series. Go look at my channel, the front channel. And there's a, um, there's a playlist, um, how to choose your niche and go through that. I talk a lot about the different ways to do that. Um, Dan Finer, will stacking paid ads along with the 90 day challenge speed things up? Um, it depends on what you mean by speed things up, right? Like success takes time. Like, do you have a converting offer? The only time I run paid ads is when I have a converting offer. When I know I'm gonna put a hundred bucks, I know I'm gonna get back at least 80 ish right away. I know for a fact with my numbers, if I put in a hundred bucks and I didn't even get anything back right away, 45 days later, I get all that money back because I know my list converts at that rate to 45 days out. I'm, I'm cash flow. I'm making that money back for sure. But I want that money back same day. I want to put in hundred dollars and I want that hundred dollars coming right back in my shopping cart that day. And the reason I'm able to scale and run lots of ads is because I have a funnel that does turn cold traffic into leads and leads into customers. So if you have that already, it probably is worth testing running some cold traffic ad to it. Um, but if you don't have that, then building out the funnel and doing your 90 day challenge is probably the best use of your time. Um, cool. So questions about like, what are the profitable ad strategies? It's the same stuff. Look at my $5 a day Facebook ad strategy. That's exactly what I'm using right now. Um, awesome. People are stoked on it. Cool. Cool. I'm just kind of looking here. Um, what distribution channel would you use for a private Montessori school? I would build a list and I would use the email. Like email is the distribution channel, uh, for sure. And then I think teach parents what they can do at home to help their kid have a Montessori like education. And then at some point, some of those moms are gonna be like, you know what? I'm all in on this. Like once they realize like how deep and how awesome it is, like they're going to go from one of your readers to one of your customers. So putting out lots of content to help them, I think would be really powerful. powerful. Jay Carlos, what's up, man? What would be my steps or approach to offering my marketing skills to mom and pop biz like I did with my Tahoe Outfitter friends? Um, just forging relationships, man. It's all about being helpful, being willing to show up, coach them. Like, hey, man, if you want me to sit down and teach you, I'll just sit down an hour, no worries, no charge, nothing. Like, let me know when you want to learn how to do this internet marketing thing. I'd be happy to share. And out of that, always came clients. Always. Never once did they actually do what I taught them. They were like, that is huge. That is awesome. Thank you for showing me that. Like, I want to do it. And what really helped is I had my own analytics account. I could show them of how well my wife and my website were doing. And I could be like, look, this is what our traffic was last year. This is what our traffic is year over year. And they see like 246% in increase or 630% increase. And they're like, what? Like, I need that in my business. Like, cool. Yeah, I can help you do that. Same stuff. Same process. So having a win under your belt on something that you're working on, something that you own or something that you've already done, and then just taking the time to sit down and teach them. And you might have to teach three, four people how to do it before you get one person signing up, but is it worth a $2,000 client every month? For sure. For me, it was at least. Um, so yeah. So um, Deborah, I'm noticing like it is really difficult to put oneself out there on video. And like, if you don't like the process of video, like it's okay to be a writer. It's okay to work and just in the written word as a blogger. That's how my wife went about it. She does have a very successful YouTube channel, but like most of it started, she didn't do a talking head video with her on camera, like her face on camera for years and years and years and years and years. Um, and then podcasting is another thing. Like you don't have to do, if you like talking on the phone, you're, you're, you got the gift of gab. Um, you could do a podcast as well. You don't have to do YouTube videos. Like it's the only thing I can do because I don't like to write and I don't want to just do podcasts. Like that means I have to interview people and stuff. And I just want to like have this moment with you, right? Like I, 
I get that the lens that I'm looking at right now is actually you. And I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to really hold that conversation. So it just works for me, but like, don't feel like you need to do it because I'm doing it. My wife as a blogger, I thought I had to blog to become successful and I never finished blogging because I hated blogging. I didn't like my written word. I judged it. I tried to perfect it. I never published. So I never got anything done. So I didn't make any progress on that path until I started doing what was in my DNA, which is the video. So stick with what's in your DNA. And that's really the, the power there. Um, cool. So keen to get in a cost per acquisition affiliate marketing, Daniel Douglas. What's up, man? Um, CPA marketing industry as a job while you work on your passion project. That's kind of cool. Um, create a job to feed the family. Any experience? Yeah. Like I think you're right. I think getting a job, that's what I did when I hit ground bottom, like a rock bottom, I went all in on a business. It totally failed. It flopped. It went completely bell up, belly up. When I say I went totally in, I sold both my vehicles right? My, my vehicle and my wife's vehicle, uh, which was half mine, uh, literally like we sold everything pretty much like we're living out of a bag and the back of my parents' house thought for sure the business was going to make it. Didn't had to borrow like 120 or 1200 bucks to get this beat up old Jeep, uh, just to get some wheels. And my wife and I went and got jobs, right? And most entrepreneurs, they, they like feel entitled to the, not most a lot. There, there is a segment of people who feel entitled of like, no, 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 no this should happen for me. And I was like, I hate rock, but I was like, I'll take a $15 an hour job. Where's it at? Like I'll do anything right now to get my own place to move on from there. And sure enough, we did that. We both got jobs, worked on our website on the side, kept going, kept going little by little. And within about six months of really intense work, uh, we, we got to that next level. So for me, I got a customer support job. Uh, customer support was easy. I had experience. I'd managed a department. I've worked in many customer support call centers. So I just went and did what was easy, what I could get a job at, get decent pay that wouldn't really uh, consume me once I left. That way, when I left, I was 100% all in on our side gig. And that, that worked really well for us. Um, Yep. So uh, automotive, go for it. I think there's a lot of people who crush it on automotive, Mark. Um, I think there's a guy, Chris Fix on YouTube. Check out what he's done. It's it's astounding what he's been able to do. Um, can I explain the campaign ad set and the ad? And what do I think about ClickFunnels? So I don't recommend ClickFunnels. I'm not a fan of it. Um, the campaign ad set and ad, just watch my videos. I've got enough YouTube, how to do Facebook videos. Uh, go check out the playlists on those. And that's where all the information is. Um, how would I do an ad for a Kickstarter campaign? Uh, again, I would build a list, right? Like I think the most successful Kickstarters come from people or groups who have audiences. Like that's, that's, that's just the always trick, right? Like authors who hit the New York Times bestsellers list have audiences to sell to already. Kickstarters that crush it have audiences to sell to already. So I would spend years building an audience before ever launching something on Kickstarter personally. Now, is there a way to run really intriguing videos that get people like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I have to click and buy. Yes, there is. I'm not that kind of a creative, right? I'm not that smart. I'm not that creative. And I don't, do video in that wow way. Like I'm not a vlogger either, right? I don't, I don't make things look sexy or fancy or like I'm pretty like nuts and bolts. Here's click here, do this, click here, do that. Right. Like it's, but that's just, that's a function of my personality. I'm a form follows function kind of a person. So, um, I, I would find someone who can make an epic video that makes whatever you're trying to kickstart look so incredible that everyone has to have it right now. Um, and I would probably focus on people who like Kickstarter and like Indiegogo in addition to something that identifies them to like and want what you have uh, to try to find people who already are known to support um, those kinds of things. Um, cool, cool, man. All kinds of happy people. Gary Patterson, good day from Australia. I thought it was, how you going, mate? Uh, nobody said good day when I was in Australia. Everybody say, how you going, mate? How you going? Another bim tang, mate. Uh, that's when I'm in Bali. Um, Cool. Dane, what's up, man? Good to see you here. Um, I don't offer telephone consulting. I don't do any one-on-one -on -one at all. Um, it's me, Don. What's up? Philippines. Awesome. Got a lot of teammates out there. I so want to make it to the Philippines. It's going to happen at some point. Um, let's see. Benj. Awesome. Hating on it. You are done from the channel. I love being able to remove people from the channel from this. I wish I could remove people from the channel from the normal comments. That'd be awesome. Uh, Francesca Joy Bubbles, I miss your comment. The way my comments work, they jump all over the place. So let me go back and see if I can find it here. Um, now, four, two, one. Hello. Okay, I see your hello. 
Yes, sounds good. Miles, you missed my question. You must have misheard. Um, Francesca, I'm looking at all the things you said and I do not, like it might've got caught in the spam trap, to be honest. Um, I don't see a question from you. I'm looking at, so um, I apologize, but I don't see that there. Um, Hans Holt, you look like Republican, bro. <laughs> That's awesome. Like you, you must, what? All right, you're done. I just got trolled. I bought into it. That's awesome. Dude, so one thing I'm noticing, which is really interesting, uh, you're done from the channel, by the way, Hans. Um, I have I have zero tolerance for trolls and spammers and anybody who tries to, to get a little bit weird in comments, gone, but gone forever if I can. Like hide them from the comments every time. Um, it's, it's kind of fun for me to do that because um, just ain't no time. So many people are willing to, and this is what's funny because there, there was a lady from Brazil saying that like, you know, she feels vulnerable putting herself out there and like, dude, making YouTube videos and putting your, even making blog posts and putting yourself out there is an absolute exercise in vulnerability. It is really, really difficult. And then you get trolls who aren't putting themselves out vulnerable. They're not actually creating anything. And all they do is go talk smack about everyone when they don't have the balls to step up the cojones, the chutzpah, whatever you want to call it. They don't have what it takes to put out anything themselves. And it's like, it's so annoying, but it's actually it's just the way of the world. And what it is, is when someone like you who step up and start making content all the time, you put them up against their beliefs and like they want to create content. They want to create a platform, but they're not doing the action. They, they're not taking the steps. So instead they just go dark side and they just troll. And like, if you're doing a content, if you're doing a 90 day challenge, if you're on it, be really heavy with that report of spam. Be really heavy with the highest users comments from this channel, like get them out of there. If someone's not contributing to a positive experience for you and them in the comments, make sure it won't happen again ever from them. I'm that's one of the real reasons why I'm on top of my comments so much. Like you might notice I do a lot of commenting on the comments. Like I'm in there cleaning it out. I get so many people attempting to spam my comments and it just, there's no tolerance. There's no place for that. And every time we report someone to spam, you're seeding their algorithm so they can stop them from spamming other channels. So use that mark spam. Um, Irma Bustos, how many blogs can you place on one funnel? You got it backwards. So you, you can put as many funnels as you want on a website and you'd have one blog on a website. Right, so you can do it as many, a funnel is just a page. A funnel is just an opt-in page or a sales page, right? And you just link them together. A funnel is not something special. Like Russell Brunson didn't invent something special. It's just a page followed by a specific page in a specific order. Um, Oliver, you learned about Facebook ads. Awesome, you're getting better and better. Good to hear. Your sales from Facebook have almost tripled. Oliver, that's what I'm talking about right there. Um, Bro JC, what's up, man? You wonder if paid leads are, as responsive as organic ones, what are my experiences on this? If paid leads are as responsive, like I, I wouldn't buy leads. I don't buy leads. I wanna, I wanna grow everything organically because it's all about the relationship. People buy from people who they trust and who they like. I Relationship is absolutely everything to me, which is why I'm stoked to have a 3,800 subscriber list right now when I could, I could use some tactics to grow my list faster, but it's not gonna grow with people who find me, consume my content, find my more content, and take a series of actions to get themselves onto my inner circle. Like I'm not, it's not all that easy to find my opt-in, it pops up on every blog post. But like from YouTube, like I don't even plug my opt-in on every video on YouTube. I want people to have to jump through hoops to get on my list. I want to make it kind of a barrier to entry. And I give a lot more value to people who are on my email list because I really believe that it's all about that relationship value. Um, so to me, whatever's gonna give the biggest, the best long-term relationship value, that's where I would focus my, my efforts. Um, uh, I don't have a backlink strategy at all. Um, okay. I take that back right now. I'm doing podcasts as a guest and it isn't actually a backlink strategy. I'm doing it to leech their audience directly. Um, it's, it's an audience growth strategy, but I generally get a backlink from every podcast that I go on and also the speaking gigs, uh, I guess when I'm, so I've, I've got a few more speaking gigs coming up and I got a couple blog posts on their websites and those are getting me some backlinks, but it's not like I'm doing it for that. That's just kind of what I get. Uh, Mark. Okay, cool. So you saw Chris fix that. I mean, he's proving that like, he's not even on camera. It's his hands that are on camera. Um, automotive industry. There's, there's, there's a ton of possibility. 
Um, what exact keyword am I targeting? Um, I'm not sure, Zeus. I think you might be talking to somebody else there. Um, Boston. Okay, yeah, there's a little conversation going on. Cool. So FK2, Twitch channel, you're getting followers. Awesome to Facebook ads. Now you don't know how to pay the cost of your Facebook ads. You're thinking drop shipping because affiliate program would just pay around 8%. Yeah, like um, if you don't have an offer that converts, there's no sense to be paying for ads. That's it. Paid ads are fuel. Pour fuel on fire to get bigger fire. Not pour fuel on ground. That just makes a stinky mess, right? Like literally you have to have an offer that converts first and you can test it with paid ads. But like, yeah, I, I didn't do consistent paid ads until I had a fully functional business that had a very proven system to convert cold traffic to leads and leads to customers and customers to extra good customers, right? Like my customers didn't just buy one thing. They were gone. Like I had multiple products to sell them, uh, membership programs that had residual income for me. Like all that was built before I ever ran my first paid ad. Um, because you know, if you go negative cash flow negative for a long time, like it sucks. Like it's not fun. Um, your big goal is to make mobile games. Awesome. Start coding, mate, get to it. Um, you kind of, yeah, you need, you need an audience for sure. But like, if you had a really good game and you were advertising the installs on your game and you had in-app purchases on your game, there's a, there's a pack cash. There's a path to cash flow right there. Like if you want to make mobile games, dog, like start coding, that's what you do. If your heart and your dream and your goal is to make mobile games, go make your first mobile game. Stop running ads. Don't do the Twitch thing. Go code. Lock yourself in your basement, teach yourself how to code, X code or whatever language you choose, get her done and go make your first game and then make your second game and make improvements to both of them and you'll get better and better. You'll figure out how to integrate in-app upsells and cryptocurrencies and I don't even know what you'll figure out, but like if that's what you want to do, do it. Like that's the way to do it. Um, Tameless Designs for a clothing brand, would I go heavily on ads or invest in ambassadors spread word of mouth? Yeah, that's a good question. I would probably go the ambassador route, trying to leverage the audiences of other people. And then you could probably pay them with apparel, which you're getting at wholesale. So you could like be like, hey, I'll give you this $500 worth of gear that costs you like $220 to make. So like, I think there's a better arbitrage there, but I do think the ambassadors and or um, like that kind of influencer style, that, that would be my approach. Um, certain types of ad, certain types of paid ads can work for certain types of clothing brands, but like, it really depends on like, if you're a lifestyle brand, try to get those people who emulate the lifestyle that you are, that you're expressing. I think that would work really well. Um, joy G T three, there's very little info on your industry. Um, is there a way to just run ads and let Facebook figure out which audience is the best? Ouch. That's, that's a recipe for spending lots and lots of money. Like theoretically the conversion ads work that way, but I mean, research is the key. Every, most people try to skip out on the research. Uh, research is absolutely the key. Um, so you, you, it just, it takes a lot of work. Like there's just no way around that. Um, how is the meditation niche? Can you really make a steady income selling guided meditations? I mean, it's worked for us for sure. Um, doesn't work for everybody. There's a lot of people, a lot of people trying to copy us, trying to mimic us, trying to do what we're doing and it didn't work for them. Um, but most of those people didn't put in four to five years nonstop of, not being rewarded from the efforts to figure out what works, right? There's a lot of little things that get figured out to get to the point. But like, again, helping an audience solve their biggest problems with a very specific niche. I mean, that, that's the key, right? So like it, it works for us, um, but like it's not for um, everyone. So you thought Facebook is a friend of little guys like us. Now Zuckerberg hates us. Zuckerberg does not like direct response marketers and they want us off. They want the billion dollar brands who spend tens of millions of dollars a month without thinking uh, that's who they want advertising on their platform. Um, do I recommend webinars or YouTube live to promote membership course? I use a video sales letter personally. Uh, actually, we're, use, we're testing a written sales letter right now. So I've used a video sales letter and a written sales letter but I build a relationship with people first before sending them over to my membership offer. So they go through my normal funnel, through my Facebook ads or, or from organic traffic, they get on my email list. We email them several valuable things. We offer them products. We help them become customers. And then later in the conversation, a week or two into the conversation, we introduce them to our membership program after they've, we've taken the time to build the trust and the likability is the goal. Um, Israel MV, you got offered a top mortgage broker to follow him around, create a vlog in YouTube for free and monetize based on clients you get to that channel. Excited and afraid, advice please. Wow, uh, do you have any better opportunities than that? That's it, sounds like a lot of experience. 
Um, can you do free work for six months? Like the sales cycle of a mortgage broker, right? Like go, go learn what that sales cycle is because if you start videos day one and homie even said earlier, it took him 90 days before his videos exploded. So free videos every day for 90 days. And then it explodes and he gets in somebody who then goes through the sales cycle. Well, for somebody to get a mortgage, they have to find a house they want to buy. They have to qualify. They, then the closing process is 30 days. Like, you know, you might be four to six months out from seeing a paycheck. Uh, so really get, just get honest. And like, if you're in a position and, and you don't have anything more valuable for your time to do and you want that kind of experience, it could be really cool. Um, you also could negotiate with them and get a little paycheck as well. So that's um, possibly what is possible. Um, what is my most embarrassing moment? Ivy the gamer, getting down to the real stuff here at the end. I like it. My most embarrassing moment. Hmm. I don't know. I've done a lot of dumb stuff. I've done a lot of dumb stuff, but I don't know how embarrassing any of it's been. I don't know. Um, I'm have to think about that. That's a good one. I like that kind of question. Um, dudes reviews. Can you learn SEO even though you don't have an education in programming? Absolutely. Like I learned SEO. I, I have my university degree is like university studies. Like literally it's university studies. Um, like I studied the university. Like I played, I got credits for doing golf and handball and weightlifting and all kinds of random classes. So yeah, I, I'm totally self-taught. Everyone can be self-taught for sure. Um, Jay Carlos felt the same way about tube buddy. I get that. Um, so Sonax SEO for someone who doesn't have any money, what should you do? You should go watch my video that says miles. If you had $0 and had to start over, what would you do? Literally type that into the search bar on YouTube. You'll find the video. I explained exactly. It took me an hour to explain it. Um, dude hack. Do I think you're better off going for long tail keywords in YouTube, 500 character tags to try to rank early or specific popular tags, uh, to your niche? Like I'm, I'm all about the long tail. I will absolutely go eat up all those long tail keywords that most people aren't focusing on because it's going to be a quicker path to traffic. It's going to be lower volume traffic. And then I'll work my way up to the shorter tail keywords. That would be my personal approach. Either way works. The trick is doing the work every single day. Um, all right, it just jumped. Aaron, where, where did you go, Aaron? All right, there you go. Aaron Darty. Aaron Dotty? Aaron Dotty. I think that's it. How quickly did you find mine and my wife's membership site grow? Any new tips that you had to growing at conversions? Yeah. So it grew fast because we had three plus years of email list building. So we probably had 20 or 30,000 subscribers on our email list by the time we launched our membership program. So we had a group of people who knew, like, and trusted us. So there's two ways to look at that. Number one is we wrote a sales page. The next day we mailed the offer and we brought in a bunch of members straight out of the gates. So two days is one measurement. And if I was one of those ninja fancy, look at how fancy I am type marketers, I would say it took me two days to grow my membership to blah, blah, blah revenue per month, right? Two days, I made five grand, 10 grand a month residual or something stupid. But the truth is we were building that audience for four years straight. So the other side of the coin, the real side of that coin is it took me about four years to build the audience and the everything. Now, could I have had the idea to launch the membership at year two with a smaller audience and still get some members? Absolutely. It just was, you know, it just fit into our business model at that point at about year four is when we really jumped into that model. Uh, we wrote the sales letter first and sold the sales letter first before we had anything in there. I think that was a really smart move on our part was to test the idea before building out all this fancy stuff that nobody wanted. Uh, and then people bought and we were like, uh Oh, <laughs> and then we got to work and we, we started populating it with things. Um, I believe there was one page they got access to that had like one or two things on it the day it launched. And then the next day there were like three pages and then five and then boom, all of a sudden, like within a week or two, it was this kind of robust, uh, thing. And we also gave people a very discounted rate that first time we still have original members. Um, that was four plus years ago. Uh, five. Uh, we still have original members paying because we've never, we never lowered the price back down to that point. I think it was like 22 bucks or something. And we still have people who are in the membership at this point um, after years and years and years. So that's, that's the, the, the honest, um, that's the truth of how powerful it can actually be. Um, yep. So that's what I got. Uh, any advice for Amazon merch? Um, man, nah, like we got accepted to Amazon merch. We might move in. 
might start throwing some stuff around. But again, my trick to Amazon merch is going to be that I would email my list of 150,000 people saying, Hey, check out this thing I just made on Amazon merch. You want to buy it? And like my people would buy my stuff. So that's my trick is, is build an audience that you, that knows, likes, and trusts you. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm finding my message on this live stream, build an audience that knows, like, and trust you is the answer to almost everything. Kyle Renstrom uh, has a question. You're welcome for the Facebook ad stuff, by the way, man. Um, when I'm launching a new Facebook campaign, how many clicks are you looking for beside, before I decide yes or no? So I don't base it on the clicks. I base it on the cost per lead and the cost per new customer. I'm looking for a cost per lead out of the gate within two days of 75 cents because that's a function of my business. And then I'm looking for a sale to happen within about... 20 days, which is spending a hundred dollars. So five bucks a day, I'll spend up to a hundred dollars. If I haven't got a sale within a hundred bucks is it, I'll make a decision. If my cost per lead is low, I'm gonna let it run just because I'm okay. Like I said, I, I make that money back for sure. Anyways. Um, I'm, and I'm in a financial position to let that money sit on the line for a month if needed. Um, but generally speaking, if I do, if I would make a hundred bucks, I'll spend up to a hundred bucks before I'll make the decision to turn off an ad campaign. Because if I spend $80 and that next click, the $80 and 25 cent click is a sale, I will make a hundred dollars on average from that sale, which means I'll make $19 profit. So I don't want to turn my ad sets off too early because I might make a sale at the 95th dollar. And then I might make a sale the day after that at the third dollar. And then all of a sudden, like all the numbers in my funnel could change really quickly. Um, and again, I have uh, a multiple video series, how to analyze Facebook ads on a playlist that you can go watch. Um, Joseph, do I use Hootsuite? Nope. To manage my social media accounts? Nope, not at all. We use a Pinterest tool called uh, Board Booster. I explained how we use that in my Pinterest video. Um, a little secret, my wifey helps me a lot with my Instagram. She's much more Instagram friendly than I am. So she helps a lot. So um, I got that going for me. Um, do I use if this, then that? No, I don't at all. Um, what interest should you select for people looking to buy a house? Um, so I would rewind backwards from there and I wouldn't look for people trying to buy a house right now because they already know people. Like when someone wants to buy a house, what are they thinking about researching, looking at six months before they're ready to buy a house? I would meet them there. I would target them with things that help me identify they're there. And I would give them information to help them become an educated person on the process. So I would, I would figure out a way to meet them six, three to six months before they're ready to buy a house because that way when they're ready to buy a house, they already know, like, and trust you. So you got to build that first. That'd be my uh, approach there. Um, what up, Jacob? Good to have you here. Aussies say no worries, mate. That's very true. They, they definitely do. Um, Oscar, glad you like the content. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Am I using Feedly? Nope. Not using Feedly at all. Um, how would a newbie find a sub niche in a competitive niche? Um, that's a really good question. Like look inside your heart, man. Like what, what in your heart gives you some sort of a random competitive advantage versus everyone. So like, let's say the fitness niche, super competitive, right? Well, maybe you're vegan. All right. So like weightlifting for vegans type thing, right? And you talk about how you can get all your protein out of the complete proteins and how to make a complete protein diet with all plant-based without having to kill animals or destroy the internet or waste all our water on animal flesh, right? Like you could be that spokesman, that kind of like hard line for that. So, but if you're not vegan, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like you love eating meat and you're like, oh, that's not me at all. So what do you love, right? Maybe you're into nootropics. Maybe you're into uh, like, I don't, I don't know. Like that's where I, it needs to be a function of what you love. So my friends in New Zealand, um, she's a fitness instructor. She was a certified fitness instructor. He was a professional rugby player. Like this dude is a brick. Like literally this dude is an absolute brick. Um, they are like the fittest couple I know. And they had an online gym. But then they're like, all right, well, like they wanted to go niche more and she loves horses. So they created a course, fitness for dressage riding for a type of horseback riding. Boom, they found that overlap of what they love and what they're professionally good at and that worked for them. So it's gonna come from within and that's when it, that's when it works the best. Um, cool, so uh, Shadow Mist, drive home, drive safe. No, no watching YouTube when you're driving. Um, Brody Allen, how do you find, how do you, how long do you need to run $5 ads before you do conversions? Um, I do, I run conversion ads from day one, personally. Um, how do we overcome comparison itis with established marketers and create original content, not copying to serve that niche? 
mute everyone and move forward and trust your heart and just go and mute everyone. Unsubscribe. I got a question the other day. It was like, what blogs and YouTube channels do you follow, Miles? I was like, none. Like, I don't have time for that. Like, I don't read anybody's stuff. I, I get zero emails to my inbox. Zero. E like, I've unsubscribed from everything. I do not read. The only thing I read about is like financial stuff. And like, that's my kind of geeky, nerdy, like real estate investing, all that stuff. That's stuff I'm just like interested in uh, as a, because of kind of where I'm at in my life. Right. Like, but like Marcus said, like I'll read old school books, right? Like Dan Kennedy, John Caples, Eugene Schwartz. I'll read the books from the 1920s, 30s, and 40s about human psychology. I'm actually reading a book right now from the mid 1800s about the um, collective about like tribe mentality, about like herd mentality. It's crazy some of the stuff people used to do back in the day. It was literally written in the 1840s. It's kind of tough to read. Um, but that's that's what I do is I try to go, because like, so I'll use Russell Brunson as an example, right? Like Russell Brunson is directly swiping and deploying with new names, the exact ideas that all of the great copywriters before him taught. Dan Kennedy, like all of them. Like he is literally rewriting what they talked about. And when you really study what everybody's doing enough, everyone's standing on the shoulders of giants. Some people are better at acknowledging said giants and other people put really big price tags and claim the ideas as their own. So how you go about it is it's a personal preference thing. And like, I'm not like nothing new is coming from this channel, but I'm just bringing it with my own flavor and my own style that comes from like the result of my entire upbringing and the result of all my experiences and my professional experiences, having built websites in 1999, started making money online in 2003, full-time online since 2010, right? So I'm bringing all of that plus my kind of personal DNA, my, my background, my, my upbringing in the Bay Area in the 1980s and 90s, all of that converges in this. And so you have that too, you just gotta let it fly. And I think honestly, like tune everything else out unsubscribe their courses aren't going to help you they're just trying to sell you shit anyways like you can even unsubscribe for me i won't even be like literally like if that will help you stay focused and take more action do it because that's the goal my goal for you is to get you on the path to success and the path to success is you're just boldly moving forward you're testing different things you'll find your voice it'll appear you'll you'll really find your your way to dial it in um damn we've got like three minutes left here i'm almost out of my throat coat tea um, it's been awesome. Like I'm amazed how many of you guys made, were here in the beginning. If you were here in the beginning, give a shout out to yourself. Be like, yep. Hashtag badass. I made it all the way to the end. I like knowing who, who just snuck on at the end. Who's been around the whole time. Um, do I have a course or a video on the final piece of the funnel? Like how to purchase? Yeah. Like in my DIY sales funnel video series on YouTube, I think it's video eight. But there's a playlist. So if you go to the Miles Becker channel, click on playlist, look for the DIY sales funnel video series, um, and then go through there. And I think it's number eight. We go into the shopping carts, and that teaches you how to actually um, create the the sale. And then, um, uh, what's my take on print on demand T-shirts? Everyone can do it. The bar to entry is super low. Um, it's very difficult to stand out. Um, do to learn coding, do you have to be good in math? I don't think so. Like I know people who are pretty, I, I know some very not smart people who make really cool stuff with code. Code's a language. It's not math, right? Coding is, it's like learning a foreign language, like Espanol or something, right? Like it's, it's, it's learning another language, but it's a language of code. So it's easier to learn than a spoken language because there's not all this conjugation of rah, stuff. My Spanish is pretty good, but I, I mess up a few. Um, Oscar, PayPal, Stripe, which one is best? Uh, I pretty much only use Stripe right now. Um, PayPal is a little weird, but off, most people offer both. Um, cool, Tameless Designs, I'm glad that that rung true. Uh, Ryan Adams, you got a general website about electronics with subcategories, what's the advice? Uh, lots of content on there. You can write content every day about any subcategory. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it matters that much, Ryan, um, or Rayon, excuse me. I think the trick is to just put out the content every single day. It'll be on category pages some days, it'll be subcategories, it'll be supportive of the subcategories, it's gonna be over here, over there. It doesn't really matter because if you do it every day for three years, you're gonna have 900 to 1,000 blog posts about all your different products and you're gonna become a dominant force in the niche. If you try to, try to figure everything out before you start over and over, you're never gonna make any progress. So just start and kind of see what's going on. Um, did I take SEO courses? I took a few, but um, the best SEO course I ever took was 
just putting out the content over and over and just learning and tweaking and learning and tweaking. Um, yeah, Terea, I think affiliate marketing is a good place to start. Create a blog. If you like to write, create a YouTube channel. If you like to perform, create a podcast. If you like to talk, build an audience. Go give value to an audience is the starting point for all of it. Um, Element was your favorite brand in your skateboarding? Totally. I had this Think Deck I liked a lot, but um, I like I like the tree. I'm, I'm a tree pool. I like trees. It's true. Um, for new funnels, how long am I emailing nurturing? So for me on the Miles Beckler brand, they come into my funnel and then that's it. They're gone. Um, like literally they go onto my broadcast list day two. I don't have a follow-up at all. Should I? Maybe, I don't know, but just, I get people on my daily list quick. Uh, for my wife's, we just reworked that today. Actually, we were working on her follow-up sequence. I believe it's 10 days, but there's a few subsets. So it could be 10 to 14 days. Um, we tried 30 days for a while. It was a little too long. So, um, so let's see here. All right. Well, that's it. Badass. Yep. Yeah, Francisco been on Eric been on. That's awesome. Talon, you should have halfway through. Good on you. You can watch the other half on the replay. It's cool. Um, yeah, cool. You guys are awesome. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm gonna call it at this point. Like it's been cool. We did two hours together on a live on a Wednesday and you know what this came from? I wanted to make a video. I tried recording three separate videos today. And I didn't like any of them. I did one, I was like 14 minutes in and I'm just like, what am I talking about? This is whack. So I deleted it and I tried another one and I got like eight minutes in and I'm like, I don't like this one either. And then I was like all kind of mashuganud. And I went up to what Melanie, I was like, Melanie, like we need to go to the, we had to go to the grocery store to get some food for dinner and stuff. And I was like, let's just go to the store. I don't know, whatever. Like, and then I was like, you know what? Lateral move. I'm just gonna do a YouTube live. I'm just, I'll just, whatever. And I went in, I mailed the list. We went, we got the groceries, made dinner. And then I came on to do the live and this has been a ton of fun. So I thank you for joining and just know that sometimes out of challenges come great opportunities. And that was my lateral move was like, man, I'm not really enjoying this, these videos. I didn't like the way they came out. And you often see the one video I publish a day. You rarely see the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 outtakes. Sometimes I nail it first try one take. Sometimes it takes 10 tries to get one take. So just know that behind the scenes, everyone goes through the process. There's a learning curve. It's still trial and error. Um, if I go snowboarding, I've been snowboarding a long time. I still fall down from time to time, right? Like if that's how it happens. I'll fall off my stand-up paddleboard every once in a while. Um, and that's just the way it works, right? People fell down like crazy in the Olympics. Even the best athletes in the world fall down sometimes. So just know that you see the event of it coming together and behind the scenes, there was a lot of effort and a lot of mistakes on my end today. But hey, I got it done because I got a deadline and I was committed to getting this out to you. So that's it. Um, awesome. I got one more person I get to remove from the channel here at the end, Jacob Birch. I like it. You're done from the channel. Thank you very much for that. And um, that's it, y'all. So thank you very much for your time. I will connect with you on the next video. I got another one coming out either Friday or Saturday, and it'll probably be topical. And then um, an adventure starts for me, and I'll share with you more about that adventure as it comes along. So until now, uh, until then, be well, keep rocking, put out the comment, be of service to the audience, grow your list. That is the path to creating the success that you desire. I hope this has been helpful. Give it a thumbs up if it has, and I'll connect with you on the next video. So until then, be well.